access to digital information of private individuals. Last Thursday, the Senate Intelligence Committee approved the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act of 2015 with a vote of 14 to 1. The ACLU, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Freedom Works, and the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers were part of a large coalition of groups who spoke to the committee warning about the dangers of the bill. CISA would allow the government to use private data gathered from companies in criminal proceedings without a warrant. Earlier this month, the Center for Democracy and Technology wrote a letter stating, quote, the lack of use limitations creates yet another loophole for law enforcement to conduct backdoor searches on Americans, end quote. The White House has announced that its Office of Administration is no longer subject to Freedom of Information Act request regulations. The White House said the changes were consistent with court rulings that have held the office is not subject to FOIA. The Office of Administration handles several duties, including archiving emails. Many offices in the White House are exempt from the FOIA, but the Office of Administration has responded to FOIA requests for 30 years. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by CoinArch, offering innovative online trading solutions for Bitcoin. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX and get free brokerage for the first seven days. It only takes $10 to start an account. That's CoinArch.com. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? Well, for a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to say big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Federal Bureau of Prisons has canceled its contract with the Management and Training Corporation for its for-profit prison in Raymondville City, Texas. The contract means the Willisee County Correctional Center has shut down and about 400 prison workers are out of work in an area with one of Texas' highest unemployment rates. The facility has been plagued with problems, most recently on February 20th, as inmates rioted and took control of the prison. A 2014 report by the American Civil Liberties Union found that people incarcerated in private prisons are often abused and lacking oversight by the Bureau of Prisons. As the Texas Senate debated open carry legislation, the Huey P. Newton Gun Club marched outside, carrying rifles. The Dallas-based club is named after the co-founder of the Black Panther Party. Group member Eric Coffrey says the gun club stands in solidarity with all people who are marching and who are patrolling against police terrorism. In other open carry news, the Texas Senate passed legislation which would allow for open carry of weapons in public spaces. With a vote of 20 to 11, the Senate passed SB 17, which would allow concealed weapons permit holders to openly carry their handguns. Texas state law currently allows for open carrying of rifles and shotguns, but not handguns. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat also comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference, March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Join scores of Bitcoin experts and enthusiasts from around the world for talks, networking, and a million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. Tickets on sale now at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use coupon code LIBERTYBEAT for $25 off your ticket. That's coupon code LIBERTYBEAT. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 17, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The military's newly developed unmanned Pentagon spokes drone completed its first live mission today, successfully carrying out a press conference on the war in Iraq. The mobile press engagement unit is being hailed by Pentagon officials as a revolutionary advancement in protecting military personnel. The spokes drone proved effective at neutralizing reporters' questions about 85 percent of the time. Many officials say the unit has the potential to save countless careers. Using a high-tech gimbal camera and microphone system, the unit tracks reporters' movements and audio outputs Output, then analyzes the data to assess the threat level. It formulates and deploys an effectively vague response. We have taken away a number of the enemy sanctuaries and gained initiatives in the areas. Eileen. Military technology experts see the unit as adaptable to a wide variety of treacherous interview scenarios. They estimated it could even withstand situations too hostile for any human spokesman to bear, such as anti-war documentary interviews. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. The we tonight includes me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online anytime at freetalklive.com. Last night, we talked about the anti-robot protests that went on at South by Southwest, the an entertainment technology conference that happens in Austin, Texas. And we just kind of really uh, kind of scratched the surface on the story with USA Today's article that just barely gave you any information about this group of protesters led by someone by the name of Adam Mason. Uh, Again, StopTheRobots.org was their website. And then conversation went into AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, transhumanism, and a lot of different sort of threads from that original uh, story. And we never got back into uh, more detail about this group. And there was also another story, io9, reporting that they believe that this group is a hoax, that the StopTheRobot.org folks are not actually legitimate. They don't actually believe the things that they say. And uh, Rich Paul, you're a tech guy, so it should be interesting to to get your perspective on this. Anyway, let's jump in Uh, from Yahoo.com. Adam Mason is explaining the purpose of Stop the Robots, a new and suddenly noteworthy group of techno-skeptic Austinites, when he notices something strange about my coffee cup. At most Starbucks locations, one's name is scribbled onto the cup by hand with a Sharpie. At this Starbucks, my name has been typed into a computer and then printed onto a sticker, which has been affixed to my caramel macchiato. Finally, somebody's going to type these things out rather than scrawling it on there with a grease pencil and misspelling it and God knows what else. May, well, no, you write it on your own, I think, right? Don't they have you write it on your own? Not in my no? experience. Okay, I, I never go to Starbucks. Uh, anyway, Mason laments, people at coffee shops create an excellent atmosphere and there's a person behind the counter that cares. I guess we've already gotten past writing your name on the cup. That's a little less human. So he's uh, upset that they have automated this process, uh, taking the human element out of it. The push and pull between humans and technological systems. If I have a problem with that, I have more of a problem uh, with young people not knowing how to write and older people losing the ability. We spend so much time typing Mm -hmm. that I don't know about you guys, but my handwriting isn't what it was 15 years ago. Yeah, mine's about the same. Uh, Mine's pretty bad and it always was, but I'm a computer guy, so... I type. I think that uh, I think that a lot of people have experienced a you know there's just a degradation in their handwriting because they just don't spend much time doing it anymore. Well, I figure if I ever need to do it a lot, I'll do it a lot and regain the practice. And I would if agree. I don't need to do it a lot, I'll be okay not doing it well. Well, I know that when I was in jail for civil disobedience for a couple of months, uh, you know, I did a lot of writing in there uh, because it pretty much was mm-hmm. your only option. And a lot of people, you know, people were writing me letters. I was writing them back. And I definitely was exercising muscles in my hand that did not get much exercise. Like, it was tiring to Mm -hmm. actually do the writing that I did. Yeah, I answered uh, just about all the letters I could, could, uh, anything I could get a return address off. And yeah, I would have I would have nights when my hand was uh, was tired from that, and my sure. uh, handwriting was even worse than usual. I would say that my handwriting was about on par of what I remember it being when I was, you know, writing things in school so many years ago. Anyway, uh, back to the story here: the push and pull between humans and technological systems, and the ways in which they should coexist, is at the heart of Stop the Robots. The group is a collective of 15 to 20 undergraduates at the University of Texas at Austin who have concerns about the future of technology and artificial intelligence. Its website states the group is, quote, dedicated to using technology for good and understanding the true risks that artificial intelligence poses to humanity, unquote. At this year's South by Southwest, Stop the uh, Robots truly started. On Saturday, in the midst of the event, the group's members put on matching blue t-shirts and marched on the Austin Convention Center with signs, urging spectators to stop the robots and be wary of AI. Uh, A couple of the signs say, humans are the future and robots won't care. 
The march was a huge, almost hysterical success, a disruption in the original sense of the word at this hyper-connected convention where technology is king and panelists ra uh, wax romantic about our ultra-automated future. Stop the Robots struck a major chord, if only as a dissenting view. The small protest won articles in publica publications as varied as USA Today, Tech Crunch, and Infowars. Fox News ran a television segment about the group. Mason has emerged as Stop the Robots spokesperson, but he did not identify himself as its leader. He hesitated to even call Stop the Robots an organization, given its newness and, well, disorganization. Mason's an undergraduate at the University of Texas, majoring in computer programming. He has a long This is the part that I really don't understand. The guy out doing the, the protest against AI is a computer programmer, right? Yeah, sure. Why is that hard it. to understand? I mean, there's there, as we discussed last night, there are going to be different levels of opposition to the you know machines and to robots. I don't think he's saying let's go back to the dark ages. I think he's saying that he's concerned about a particular class of things, uh, specifically artificial intelligence and robots, and he's concerned about people being replaced. I would imagine this is generally. The concerns that pe that people have against that people being replaced, and he's resp and he's concerned. I would um about what happens. You know, the robots don't care thing. You know, what happens if an AI starts making bad decisions from a human point of view? I think there are legitimate concerns. And yeah, we uh, yeah, I I I certainly think there are. And and we discussed this uh, last night. Uh, I, I have a lot of concerns for the advance of artificial intelligence with the idea of the state around. And as Derek J. pointed out, uh, the you know, of course, the, the idea of the state is just a manifestation from people's belief that violence solves problems. And as long as people hold that belief, uh, there's a good chance that belief will transfer over to the robots. Okay. Um, so that I doesn't guess mean I, I oppose AI. Though. I probably should have said, I am surprised that we're uh, that this is a computer programmer who's leading this protest and not an organic farmer um but i suppose you know like i get all your points i would further say that protesting against ai is about as um, is is going to be about as uh, fruitful as protesting against the combustion engine um like it is over the there's nothing you can do to stop AI from coming. If we outlaw it in the United States, it'll move to China and Russia. Right. If they outlaw it in China and Russia, it'll it'll move to it, it'll move out to Bora Bora if it has to. But uh, the the you know people are going to research AI. They're going to do it in their garages if they have to. Mm. It's it's on. I think you're right there, and I don't know if he was calling for an all-out ban on AI, in which case, you know, I'm, I'm an anarchist. I don't believe in having a government, so I can't really say ban anything. Um, it's not initiation of force to build any kind of, of robot, but it is an interesting question, let us say, that just looking at things that humans do. There was a nutbag who went around and put cyanide in Tylenol for no apparent reason. Is there eventually going to be a crazy engineer who builds himself a robot and designs it to go out and harm people? Well, yeah, probably that will happen sooner or later. Um, and, and so these are issues that, you know, we have to think about and be aware of. But uh, if he's calling for banning anything, then I would say he's wrong to that extent. But you know, there are things that, that, you know, we have to think about in advance. Who's responsible for the actions of a robot? Excellent the robot? Question. It Me? Was, it depends the on the, the level it? of AI, right? Um, now, I can tell you that if you teach a monkey to uh, burglarize homes and then release the monkey at a rich person's house and the monkey brings back you, to you a set of jewels, you're guilty. Okay. So I can tell you that much. Um, Has that actually happened? Yeah. <laughs> Would you want the story? I'll get it. I'll post it right at freetalklive.com. Yeah, please. It's, uh, is it recent? It, no. It's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, he has long brown hair that drops down to his shoulders and wears a full beard and mustache. His T-shirt on this day paid homage to Free Software, Free Society, an important treatise in the open software movement written in 2002 by activist and programmer Richard Stallman. The members of Stop the Robots, in other words, aren't the hippie freaks or flag-waving luddites you might imagine. 
Mason told me, quote, everyone thinks it's an anti-technology group at first glance, and that's kind of what we're going for, but we're actually for technology. We're technologists that love technology, and we foresee a future where technology is necessary for mankind. We'll talk more about Stop the Robots, and of course, you can also bring up anything you want. Plus, a naked man in his doorway won't leave. Quick, somebody panic. The definite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. I'm a state-of-the-art 60-inch flat-screen TV. And I mean, not to brag or anything, but if a burglar ever breaks into this place, I'm pretty certain I'm the first thing he's going to steal. I mean, it's not like he's going to take that recliner over there. <laughs> or that coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the Geico Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit geico.com today. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. More Free Talk Live happening now. You may take control of the airwaves. Bring up whatever you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
Now, I, uh, I'm bringing the anti-robot group back up because I, w- I really wanted to talk more about them last night just to kind of find out where they're coming from. I mean, uh, we knew there weren't Luddites. We learned that last night about them, uh, that they were technologically inclined, just disinclined uh, towards artificial intelligence. Or maybe they're just warning people about the potential for bad things to come out of that. That's why I wanted to get a little bit deeper than USA Today did. Uh, not that last night was a bad night. It was a great show. We had a lot of participation on the phones, a lot of people talking about various different sort of technological uh, issues that we're going to inevitably confront uh, as people, as you know, machines become more and more integrated in our lives, whether it be uh, robots serving you, you know, at McDonald's or something like that, or perhaps, you know, having little home robots. Why would you have the, uh, the vacuum cleaners and things like that? But, you know, sort of taking uh, to the Jetsons level of that level of robotic service in the home uh, to, you know, artificial intelligence on the Internet, mixing biology with technology. So we've, we covered all those things last night. But I wanted to get deeper into Stop the Robots, and uh, that's what we're doing here. And also, was it all a hoax? I uh, still want to talk about that from io9. Plus, a man naked in his doorway. He's been there for a decade. Uh, not all at once, but he's been back and forth from the doorway and in the rest of his home uh, for a decade. Na- neighbors are upset. They want something done about it. We can talk about that on the way here tonight as well. Uh, with you in studio, you've got me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And don't forget... The Texas Bitcoin Conference is right around the corner. We're talking about less than two weeks now, March 28th and 29th. It's happening in downtown Austin, Texas. The Moody Theater is the new location. I'm excited about that. Last year was great, by the way. Mark, you and I were there. We broadcast yeah. live from the event. But it was out kind of in the boonies. You know, It was out in the sticks a little ways at a big racetrack, which was a cool venue, no doubt. They had lots of cool cars there, Lamborghinis and yeah. all kinds of stuff. It was just a little way out there. And so I'm looking forward to having it right in the heart of downtown Austin uh, where things are happening. And lots of great speakers are lined up for this event. Anthony DiOrio, Charlie Schrem, who's about ready to check into federal prison. So it should be interesting to see what he has to say. The first Bitcoin felon, as he's calling himself. Uh, Jason King, Robert Murphy, David Johnston, Zimbala Nair, and George Gilder who is a world-famous investor, economist, and author. He's one of the keynote speakers. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. It's not too late to get your tickets. You can use code FTL, and you'll save $25 off the already affordable $150 price point. Plus, when you use code FTL at TexasBitcoinConference.com, then another $25 goes to Sean's Outpost with every purchase. And Sean's Outpost is doing great work with uh, the homeless. They've now been around for two years, and uh, they're doing a good job over there in North Florida. So you help them out, too, by buying your ticket at TexasBitcoinConference.com. But you've got to use code FTL. We had a great time last year. We'll be there again this time August. Why do I keep saying August? March 28th and 29th. This is coming up. I don't know what's happening in August. We'll let you know that later uh march 28th and 29th see you at texas bitcoin conference go to texasbitcoinconference.com as we go to your phone calls and thoughts mike is in seattle you're on free talk live hello mike hey how's it going good sir go ahead i'm just calling uh i'm just calling in regard to the uh the stop the robots thing that you're talking about and unfortunately i missed uh, yesterday's show but um i i think there's some merit to the concerns that people have about ai uh, primarily because you know when you when you create a machine that's you know just purely logically driven, then you know it's it's assuming that um, it's got some you know sort of restraints or you know something that that prevents it from you know just kind of running rampant and running wild. Um, if you think about um, how children evolve and things like that, they you know there's certain emotions that keep them from you know, doing things to others inherently. I think you've got this mixed up. I'm not afraid of the uh, logical robots. I'm afraid of the angry robots. It's not logic and thinking that bothers me. It's emotion. See, angry robots would be the proudest accomplishment of any computer scientist, I'm sure. But the thing that we have never figured out how, how to do is to give a computer volition. Your computer doesn't want anything. It doesn't make decisions. It makes comparisons. And it performs pre-programmed steps, and it doesn't care 
what those steps are, which is why it will show us the, the horrendous porn that you find on the internet. <laughs> if computers cared what they were doing, don't you think they'd be on Stop strike you. by now? <laughs> well, I, I think the problem, though, is that what, when you're writing artificial intelligence code, the way that it works is uh, you know, through like a genetic algorithms and things like that, you basically give it a general goal and then it iterates and evolves, and then it mutates. You know, the equation over and over comes out. Or oh no, we're totally losing Mike, and I don't know where he was going with that. But uh, interesting point, though. The different. Thank you, Mike, for the call. The difference between logic and emotion, and you know, would robots be more dangerous if they were emotional versus logical. I mean, I guess the fear that a robot, uh, lo the, the fear surrounding robot logic would be that the robot would logically come to the conclusion that humans are no longer necessary, right? Like, oh, well, you know, a robot uh, species or whatever you want to call them. The robots are here. We're in charge now. And really, what do we need these people around again? We can repair ourselves. We can upgrade our own software now. You know, we've reached the point of... Si of uh, the, uh, the the singularity where they're able to upgrade their own programming. Uh, why do they need humans at that point? Mm. So I think that's the fear uh, yeah. surrounding Well, that. there will be a point when robots likely don't you know need us. What will they do at that point? I don't know. Maybe we'll make great pets. So going on here, the members of Stop the Robots aren't the hippie freaks or flag-waving luddites you might imagine. Mason, their uh, spokesman, says, Everyone thinks it's an anti-technology group at first glance, and that's kind of what we were going for. Uh, he says they love technology and they foresee a future where technology is necessary. The goal of Stop the Robots is not to destroy every robot, both current and future, but rather to urge the makers of these technologies to ponder the implications of the systems they're creating. It's a group of technologists who found much wisdom in recent sentiments voiced by Tesla founder Elon Musk and scientist Stephen Hawking. Musk warned our biggest existential threat was artificial intelligence. Hawking said that artificial intelligence had the potential to end mankind. And when someone like Stephen Hawking speaks on something, a lot of people pay attention to it. Yeah, right? well, regular intelligence has a, the potential to end mankind. Sure, nuclear I mean, proliferation. <laughs> see, hmm. I don't know about like. Okay, so again, it's the the intelligence thing. It's the artificial emotions that concern me, not the artificial intelligence. Intelligence isn't going to wipe people out in the same way that intelligence isn't wiping out animal populations or anything like that. It's the emotions. It's it's like, oh, well, we're going to have to, you know, I'm angry for whatever reason, and I'll take care of this. You see, I think you're borrowing trouble there because we've already got emotional beings that can control robots. Yes. And I, I would be more worried about a robot program to kill right now than I would about one going crazy because there are a lot of when people computers go crazy, they just kind of stop working right. A lot of people in this world are worried about ro robots that are programmed to kill. Most of them are in the Middle East. There's more on the way. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You take control of the airwaves of Free Talk Live. Attention listeners, SurvivalLife.com is giving away free EverStrike permanent matches for a limited time only. These matches are waterproof and will light in any weather condition, rain, snow, or sleet. It will still throw a spark. Its built-in ferro rod strikes at 3,000 degrees, and it is good for 15,000 strikes. Normally, $15. Today, it's free. Get yours at FreeSurvivalLighter.com. Again, that's FreeSurvivalLighter.com. Hurry, supplies are limited. Visit FreeSurvivalLighter.com today. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of 
stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial on in toll free to bring up anything you want. We're digging a little deeper on Stop the Robots, this uh, supposed anti, this anti-artificial intelligence group. They're not against technology. <laughs> They're just saying that people need to be careful, apparently. We'll get a little more from them here in a moment. And then coming up, the naked man standing in his front doorway, apparently completely legally. Uh, We'll tell you where that's happening and give you more information about it on the way on Free Talk Live. I was really surprised at the quality of wines that we got when we got the Cameron Hughes wine box. Uh, You know, I guess the the wines that I'm used to drinking, you know, really don't stand up (laughs) to uh, Cameron Hughes wines. I have, however, seen the light. Um, we got this uh, six bottles of all different types of wine from Cameron Hughes Wine, and we had a little wine tasting with some, I don't know, cheeses and stuff like that, and it was really awesome. Yeah, it was great. Danica put that together. Yep, at the uh, Keen Activist Center. And I, I'm i really impressed. So what these Cameron Hughes wines are is they're wines that Cameron Hughes has gone around to the, the best vineyards, mostly in California, and gotten their sort of overstock. And he's bottled it up. Now, you don't know which vineyards it are. They, they are. They're, they're, you know, they, they keep that a secret. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, everybody would just get the wine from Cameron Hughes. Right. The vineyards won't let him do that. But... He does get really great wines, and you're going to be very impressed. So these are $50 to $100 bottle of wines. They get they rate almost 90 points if you're uh, paying attention to point prices of the big-name bottles. Um, and you get them between $12 and $20. Rich Paul, you were there for the wine tasting. Good stuff. Yeah, it was really awesome. So just go to chwine.com, and if you want to get free shipping, use my special code. It's FTL. So you go to chwine.com, click on the microphone in the upper left-hand corner, and type in FTL, and you'll get free shipping on all the wines. Now, wine, you know, liquids are heavy. 
You don't want to pay shipping on this if you can avoid it. chwine.com. Click on the microphone in the upper left. FTL. All right, for free shipping, that's a great deal, and it's a very limited time offer on that, so don't delay. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. A few more comments from the Stop the Robots guy. He's not the founder, he says, but he is uh, speaking for them. His name is Mason, uh, Adam Mason. He's a technologist. He's going to school at uh, University of Texas, and there was a group of about two dozen protesters outside of South by Southwest uh, that were protesting Stop the Robots, they said. StopTheRobots.org. A little bit more from him. He says that everyone thinks they're anti-technology in the first place, but they actually foresee a future where technology is necessary. They say we have to be careful that we don't let AI or technology take over human roles in a way that is counterproductive to humanity. And we have to figure out a way to use technology at a grand scale to actually create jobs. What's next? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we could actually eliminate jobs through technology? Like, you know, have robots take over all the jobs? I mean, because jobs kind of suck for most people. Um, well, I mean, it, that would kind of suck for the people who didn't have anything to do and, and needed to do something uh productive in order to uh continue their lives well that does i mean just because you don't have a job doesn't mean you can't be productive right like so you could be uh, an entrepreneur for instance and i mean there would still be things that could be done mm-hmm. presumably um but you know if, if robots are doing all the manual labor terrible mm-hmm. you know the stuff that people don't like the garbage man kind of jobs then that wouldn't be a bad thing would it um I mean, we're seeing it happen already where technology is replacing certain, you know, industries. Uh, they're replacing certain mm-hmm. jobs. Lots of auto manufacturing jobs are out the window because of mm-hmm. robots. Well, that's that's true to some extent. But keep in mind that when you say an auto industry job is out, out the window, that means it can't be done at $50 an hour. It doesn't mean somebody couldn't do that same job at, five, at $15 an hour and... Um, and be more productive than a robot. So yeah, but the a lot unions of the aren't going to let that happen, right? Well, the the union. That's why there's the union of unemployed people, <laughs> and we're here to speak for your right to go out and do that job at fifteen dollars an hour and, re, uh, and replace the union guy and, and the, the robot. robot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean the economic issues. Yes, it would be good if the jobs that nobody wanted to do were done by robots, but. In order to make that truly the case, you would have to also eliminate minimum wage mm. so that it was only when, you know, people should still have the opportunity to do to do what they what they do, you know, and to do it at whatever price makes them happy. Well, that's the interesting thing is that the increase of the minimum wage is something that we're seeing push towards more automation and robots. So. Uh, as fast food operators are seeing dramatic increases mm-hmm. in the cost of paying Seattle, for instance, going up to $15 an hour very soon. Uh, Have you seen the articles about all the restaurants closing. that are closing there? That right. that They're just a canary in the coal mine. There's oh, yeah. a lot more to come in that story. But, but the big companies like McDonald's are going to solve it because they can afford to. By bringing in automation and bringing in robots for, you know, for taking the orders. I mean, essentially, not necessarily what you would think of as a robot, like a humanoid thing, but, you know, some sort of a fancy touchpad where you just order everything that you want. And uh, if it's a touchpad, if it's not just a voice ordering thing, I mean, the fact is, you know, we're all carrying around smartphones here and Google's pretty good at deciding what I have to say. Um, It probably could take my order, too. Yep. So uh, he says, how do we think about the future, says Mason, uh, summing up the uh, reason for Stop the Robots. He says, and keep human morality tied to technology. Mason excused himself from the Starbucks. He was scheduled to speak to the documentarian right after his interview with me. He said, I've got a ton of stuff going on. He seemed overwhelmed and surprised by the attention. It's an extreme way to talk about a serious issue when you say Stop the Robots, but it worked. What's next for the organization is unclear. It's already made its mark, however small, on South by Southwest and clearly has momentum in the free press and in the public spirit. Mason has received inquiries from all over the world asking how to join in or start local chapters. He doesn't view it as his full-time job, however, and he plans to move to Silicon Valley to work on a startup after graduation this spring. 
Stop the Robots doesn't have an advocacy path or a set of legislation that it once passed. So they're not saying, you know, this should be banned. Uh, at this point, it's more of a reminder of a sickness than a prescription. Even if it folds, though, Stop the Robots has already elucidated a vision for the coming years, a guidepost for the creation of next-generation devices and systems. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Jason's in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Jason, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich, Paul, and Mark. Howdy. Hey, you're uh, on yeah, there? this AI topic is really uh, quite interesting. Uh, I just uh, you kind of stole some of my fire to the stuff you just talked about. Um, I, I've been waiting a little bit longer than that. Uh, anyway, the, the massive destruction of of the need for humans uh, in the work in the workforce and in the economy. Uh, people, I'm, I'm willing to wager that people do need something constructive to do with their time all day. I think so. Uh, or most of the, or for 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 most of the day. Um, personally, myself, if I had no no, nothing constructive to do every day. I, I would be in you know, a bad situation. However, I also am lucky, well, not lucky enough. I've, I've worked myself into a, an occupation where, you know, I'm, I'm required to actually think and, you know, I can work my hands at the same time. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there doing jobs that are quite miserable and repetitive. However, there are, I've noticed in my career that there are some people that, um, really are only cut out for repetitive tasks sometimes, um, you know, where automation would take their jobs away and next thing you know, they're displaced and, you know, social problems start rising from there. Oh, yeah. I mean, no doubt. I mean, what is it they say? Idle hands do the devil's work or something like that. So I think it's people a, need to be able to figure out things to do that don't include the devil's work, though. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, that's. Yeah, but. but, but on the ground, does it happen, though? That's the question. Now, like, when the rubber meets the road, has it been happening? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, you know, I well, can't say. I would say that you probably have a great point, but I don't have much sympathy. Well, you know, over time, uh, automation has replaced a lot of jobs, but there's more jobs, right? Like, there's more people now and still plenty of jobs. So, you know, the economy keeps on chugging along and the market creates new opportunities for people, even in the absence of some old industry that's now been completely automated. Provided it's... Much like the... I'm sorry. Uh, well, much Hold that like thought, Jason. We'll bring here. you back here. You can continue that in moments. 855, 450 free and you're rich as well. We're mm -hmm. on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. 
It's the video sensation that's taking the internet by storm. A web series on YouTube passed the 100 views mark this week. Titled Andrew and John, the wildly popular webisodes feature roommates Andrew Vanier and John Haney playing fictionalized versions of themselves in unusual situations, mostly set in and around their Chicago apartment. Dude, did you get my tart? What's a tart? Oh, you just texted me a fart. Their latest short titled Laundry Day reached the unprecedented 100 view milestone this week after a heavy promotional push in which the duo posted the skits to their Facebook pages. The hit video features the roommates wearing unconventional outfits while scrounging up enough change to do laundry in their basement. Other popular episodes include Foreign Landlord featuring John's friend Brett from work and a video where Andrew suspects John might be a zombie. Our videos consistently get over 50 views now, but Laundry Day, that's the first mm -hmm. one that's really taken off. Yeah, everyone I know has seen it. It's completely viral. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, uh, you can do that by becoming an amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. That's AMP. It stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. The concept is your five bucks a month gets rolled back into the show to help get Free Talk Live on more radio stations, get uh, more internet listeners tuned in, more satellite uh, signals available around the globe. And you can help us with that and get perks like access to the AMP Only call-in lines, the AMP Only Facebook group. And Rich Paul, I believe you are now in the AMP Only Facebook group, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, sure am. Uh, so, yeah, host of the show and a few couple hundred Free Talk Live amplifiers are in there and there's all kinds of cool conversations happening there. So you get into that and more by becoming an amplifier for five bucks a month. Use uh, any major credit card through PayPal or Visa or MasterCard right on our website, amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. We're back with Jason in Meadville, Pennsylvania. You were, uh, I think, trying to get to a point, uh, but uh, we we're nailed to the clock, so we had to interrupt you. Go ahead. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, well, a fun, I, I was, I'm under the impression that a fundamental speed limit to the economy, uh, absolute speed limit, is the, uh, for instance, would be uh, the availability of resources. Uh, I think the idea is I, I'm I'm under the impression that the idea that we can grow our economy to always absorb all the uh, the display like the, um, the the workers displaced by technology uh, by simply growing the economy more. Um, like I said, I would pose it that that's limited by resources. Yeah, I would say it is limited by resources. That's true. Yeah, the good thing about resources is that uh, people with brains are able to constantly expand upon uh, the resources that we currently have. Like, you know, what I mean by that is uh, tap those existing resources in new ways, more efficient manner, yeah. or finding a resource that wasn't a resource before. You know, classic example, of course, is oil, which used to be considered a pollutant of farmland. And then somebody figured out how to, you know, mm -hmm. refine it and turn it into something really useful. And all of a sudden now it's incredibly valuable. You know, you can support mm -hmm. about eight people uh, living and farming on an acre of land, as I understand it. I've never been a farmer, so I don't know if that's uh, I don't know, Mark, you're you're the closest we got to a farmer. Can you can eight people live on an acre if they really work at it? 
Um, they'd probably have to build up uh, to some extent, but I think it could probably be done. Vertical um, farming, as it's called. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you're gonna have chicken. Yeah, it. I think it probably could be done with like chickens mm. and rabbits and things like that. I think you could probably do it. But I would like to to point out that um, let's not constrain ourselves to planet Earth. Uh, that they, you know, NASA's suggesting that Titan has a hundred times the amount of oil that Earth does. Whoa. Um, at mm. least that's some meme that I've seen out there. I, mm. I probably could find the news story if I looked a little harder. So resources are out there. Um, there's probably an asteroid that's completely made of gold, too. I, you know, mm. it's, well, by the time you come up with a, a rocket that's going to be able to get to Titan and back with a payload full of oil, however much fuel that would cost to do that, uh, would it even be worth it anymore? I mean, and and would you have to develop uh, the kind of whatever propellant or you know however it is you get from point A to point B that would be some sort of new wave of uh, you know propellant that you wouldn't even need oil yeah. at that point? Yeah, well, I kind of see the I universe the as brain. I kind of see the universe as a race. You know, you 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 you. You start your existence as a species, and all species, I would imagine, begin confined to a single planet. So you have a certain amount of time to get off that, get your DNA off that planet one way or the other before the sun goes nova or mm -hmm. the planet gets hit by a meteor. And if you can do that, you as a species win, win. the universe. <laughs> if you can't do that, you become Extinct. You're lucky if you're a footnote. Um, so, you know, there's there's not much cost that I would not pay. I mean, if we can devour all of the resources of the Earth and in the, per in, in the process get humans onto two other planets, I would say that's a win for mankind, although a lot of individuals might not be too happy about it. It presumes that you can actually devour the resources. I mean, because, again, energy is only changing forms, right? So there would be mm -hmm. some way to tap whatever the... Uh, you know, the output of that uh, devouring process. Right? Well, that's true. And as we find more and more efficient ways to to deal with and reclaim resources, I expect to see whole industries uh, grow up that take apart uh, landfills that have been there for a hundred years and all of a sudden they're mining them for resources because they found ways to do that efficiently yep. and usefully. Jason, final thoughts. Go ahead. Oh, uh, well, final thought would be uh, I've thought about the, uh, the dump mining myself, and I believe you will see it. Uh, yeah. And that thanks, would be Jason. a great so, job for robots. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Bill. He's in Massachusetts. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich Paul, and Mark. Hey, thank you guys for your service. Go you don't have it, to Bill. Have to hey, uh, my understanding of AI versus singularity is kind of two different things and i don't know if you guys are um you know i don't understand a lot of what you're saying but i see ai as like one of those boston dynamics big dogs with facial recognition on it and other types of uh, artificial intelligence so that it can be directed on its own and i see singularity where humans and machines actually have merged together, whether in partial forms or whether uploading to a hard drive or whether um, cyborg partial. So, you know, AI is already here. We have the, uh, most of the money going into AI comes from DARPA, which is like the freaky department of the military. So, you know, you guys are talking about this, like we're all going to be involved and have a decision in all this. Well, it's all been decided. You know, futurists have written all about it and all the financiers for all this. They're just going through DARPA. The AI things, you know, they're, they're hardcore robots. You know, they're not a good thing to have. I don't um, think, uh, Bill, that the definition of singularity is dependent upon combining with machines. That's uh, transhumanism, uh, as I understand it. That well, isn't the singularity well, when people stop dying. No, the singularity. Well, singularity is when you can have an intelligent conversation with a machine where AI can just read your face and uh, read your body motions and then make a pre-programmed decision on a further action. Where singularity is where you sit down and you can have a cup of coffee and have an intelligent thing to talk. 
Well, I mean, that will certainly be possible uh, after the singularity and arguably beforehand. The technological singularity, according to Wikipedia, is the hypothesis that accelerating progress in technologies will cause a runaway effect wherein artificial intelligence will exceed human intellectual capacity and control, thus radically changing civilization in an event called the singularity. So it's the point at which technology and artificial intelligence, you know, along with it, reaches the capacity of the human mind and then surpasses it. That's essentially the point when of the singularity. So it has nothing to do with necessarily combining with humans, although that will likely be happening at the same time. That's, you know, that's going to go along with that, I think, to some extent. Um, but essentially, Sorry once once that, computers yeah. can upgrade themselves, they can program themselves, and they can, you know, write version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all on their own, that's essentially the point at which it's, you know, it's going off the rails. We don't know what's going to happen, as our caller last night pointed out, uh, the you know, the difference between version 1 and version 70 could be an Overnight, it could be a few days. You know, it could be a very, very short and period AI of time. AI isn't really that. You know, AI re isn't really that. I don't think. You know, AI is more uh, a, a less advanced, earlier stage of singularity. Yeah, I think you could I say see. that. Uh, that's. I think that's a fair thing, to, uh, fair way to put that. Bill, thanks for the call tonight. But I think uh, DARPA. We have to just think about DARPA and where the money comes in, and the people that are funding all of this are really bad folks. So to to just leisurely talk about, it, hey, we're going to be rising, robots are going to be great, but they're really not a good thing. But what um, are you going to do about it? Are you against robots, Bill? Well, I, I think that they're banning rifle rounds over them. I would argue that the merits of a project should probably be looked at based on the project itself and rather than rather than one's perception of the people starting Quay it. Bono. Quay Bono. What does that Quay mean? Quay Bono. I mean, it's... Who benefits? It's Latin. Right. Thanks, Bill, for it's the call tonight. I appreciate number. it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, I think it's his suggestion is uh, of value, right? Like if, you know, the, the most evil organization in the world wants to benefit us with some really great technology, like perhaps you should look into this a bit further. But as I've said um, on this the same conversation in the beginning uh, of the hour, what are you going to do to stop it? There's nothing that can be done to stop AI. She's a coming round the corner, and there's no. nothing you can do about it. They still can't go out of control without being self-aware, apart from garden var variety. Bugs. Well, he's suggesting they don't need to go. They need, don't need to uh, be self-aware that they be, could be controlled by an evil organization. All right, there's more on the way. You can share your thoughts, and you can also bring up whatever's on your mind. And coming up, the man standing naked in his doorway for about a decade off and on. I'll tell you about him. It's Free Talk Live. Well, I did it. I finally left the Empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. 
You can get what you need at the same prices with free Super Saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.54 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,152 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $292. Antiwar.com reports with months of campaigning, seeing him falling behind the left-centered Zionist Union list, which has accused him of trying to sabotage a two-state solution. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is now vowing that if re-elected, he will sabotage a two-state solution. Netanyahu confirmed that there will be no Palestinian statehood if he gets re-elected, saying an independent Palestine would amount to giving away territory to radical Islamists. He then accused the Zionist Union of plotting to do the bidding of the international community with respect to the occupied territories. Ironically, the comments come just a week after Netanyahu's office denied that he was opposed to a two-state solution, which itself was the result of a statement published by his own Likud party, which was very similar to yesterday's comments and which Likud distributed among synagogues nationwide in the election push. The latest comments came from an interview with NRG, a news website owned by casino magnate Sheldon Adelson, who has largely bankrolled Netanyahu's re-election campaign. Adelson has long insisted that there is no such thing as Palestinians and that the Arabs made the whole thing up to attack Israel. He similarly bankrolled the failed 2012 U.S. campaign of Newt Gingrich, who made similar claims. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports the White House Office of Administration on Monday announced it is deleting regulations subjecting it to the Freedom of Information Act seven years after a federal judge ruled the office does not have to comply with the law. U.S. District Judge Colleen Collar Cotelli ruled in June 2008 that the Office of Administration was not subject to FOIA request because it does not employ the type of substantial independent authority that the D.C. District Court has found sufficient to make an executive office of the president component an agency of the FOIA. The Office of Administration provides administrative support and business services to the president's executive office. The ruling came about after the office was not able to comply with the government watchdog group's FOIA request for up to 22 million emails. The White House said the emails had been deleted by a computer glitch. It is not clear why it took seven years, but the office is now removing FOIA policy from the Federal Register. What's more peculiar is the timing of the announcement. Monday, was National Freedom of Information Day and the week is known as Sunshine Week when news organizations emphasize government transparency. Rick Bloom, coordinator of the Sunshine in Government Initiative for the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press said it's a little tone deaf to do this on Sunshine Week even if it is administrative house cleaning. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. CNET reports, Uber's chief financial officer is stepping down after nearly two years of leading financing rounds that have seen the ride-hailing service become one of the most valuable venture-backed startups. The departure of Brent Kalinikos was revealed Monday in an email sent to investors by Uber CEO Jason Kalanick. The email stated, though two years sounds short, Uber was a much smaller startup then, about one-tenth the size we are today. Brent has provided critical leadership to take Uber to the next level as we mature 
four as a company, noting that working at a startup like Uber requires significant endurance and sacrifice. The email indicated that Kalanico's decision was based on a desire to spend more time with his family. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. Teen sex is linked to alcohol and drugs by the Center for Figuring Out Really Obvious Things. This is Doyle Redland reporting. An exhaustive four-year, $23 million study of substance abuse and sexual habits of more than 2,500 American teens has confirmed that young people between the ages of 13 and 18 who drink and or use drugs are more likely to be sexually active. Dr. Gerald Eckersley is director of the Boston-based organization. We found that this phenomenon also occurs among adults as well as every population everywhere in the world that has ever existed since the dawn of time. The center has sent a teleprompter to ready press release of its findings to more than 400 local TV news affiliates across the U.S., along with stock video footage of beer displays and teens smoking and drinking at parties. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. We are back with more Free Talk Live. Of course, you can take control of the airwaves or bring up anything that's on your mind as we launch into the second hour of this uh, yet another live edition. We're live seven nights a week here on Free Talk Live, so be sure you join us uh, here on the radio or online at freetalklive.com. The us includes me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And we're going to jump right into your calls and thoughts. Coming up, a naked man standing in a doorway for off and on for over a decade or around a decade, people in the neighborhood are getting fed up. We'll tell you more about it here in moments. Uh, but first, let's go to Dennis on the line in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dennis. Greetings, folks. I wanted to weigh in a little bit on the whole discussion about uh, artificial intelligence. Sure. So I, I kind of first want to, <clears throat> you know, uh, I have Uh-oh. graduate work in the subject before I decided that... Uh, Working for money was a lot more fun than paying to go to school. But with, with respect to the whole concern that people have maybe about, uh, I don't know, Google becoming self-aware or the machines deciding that we're inferior and have to go because they're superior, I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. But I am truly, truly creeped out, afraid, and really beyond afraid, kind of hopelessly resigned to the AI that we already know that we have, <clears throat> that thanks to Snowden, we know has been in wide use now for at least a decade. Uh, and that is specifically around the areas of pattern recognition and data mining. Um, because of what we know now from you know, the Snowden revelations uh, and others, you have to assume <clears throat> that every piece of electronic data that you have ever touched at all, anywhere, with anything that is ever connected to any kind of network has been analyzed and mined for patterns and mined for all kinds of patterns that you would never in your life think of as being something that might flag you as being quote-unquote interesting and worthy of further study. So... When NSA says, you know, we, we gather all your phone calls and emails and everything that's ever been on your hard drive, but we don't look at it. No, they don't look at it. The machines look at it. And the machines and, – and the level of sophistication here is so beyond what people really realize. What is available right now it, – it's not like what might be available in 10, 20, 30. What's available right now is stuff like, hey, you bought whole milk last week at the store and you normally don't and there wasn't someone visiting your house so what's up with that follow up on that what else correlates to that and all the people that you know all the places that you've been everything you've ever thought and written down everything that you've put into a, a google email and it's auto saved and then you never sent it anything everything has not only been analyzed and looked for patterns but in my opinion, there, there, there's no reason to believe that it has not been used to build up a psychological profile of you individually and personally, a map of what you are likely to do, how long you're likely to live, what risks you're likely to take, 
what kinds of things you would do or would not do if provoked in certain ways. Hmm. That is all well within the possibility right now, and it would kind of be shocking to me if it was not actively being used. It would be shocking to me, too. Uh, everything that we've seen that Edward Snowden said as far as uh, the collection of data fits with what you're talking about. Now, you're not just talking about the NSA here, right? You're talking about just data being collected by corporations, companies that are trying to you know, learn about consumers' buying habits. You're talking about the whole wide range, right? Well, no, I'm, I'm really just talking about NSA. Just because, the NSA, I mean, okay. Well, you, you deal with how big corporations mine your data all the time, right? You, you have that minor annoyance once in a while where you're trying to use your credit card, and of course it's going to be like you're on a date, and oh my God, your card got declined, and it's oh my God, you know, and you've got to call the card company, and no, really, I am me. You know, that, that's the level where they're at. Because they generally don't have access to the entire global picture of you, and they really don't have the computational resources to throw at building up a complete psychological and predictive model of you. That is well within the purvey of NSA. So I, I'm, I'm not worried about them being self-aware. The whole concept of um, more like artificial consciousness or true artificial intelligence that, as we might perceive something to be intelligent – is way far below where we are in sort of um, specifically designed what are sometimes in the in the art called toy applications, right? So, you know, computers can play a specific game. They can play chess and beat anyone on the planet hands down. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, there are wow. definitely cases where uh, even corporate databases can uh, draw some very interesting conclusions. I read about a man who called, and I wish I remembered the name of the drugstore, uh, but he, he called up the the uh, marketing people at a, at a drugstore chain, and he said, why do you keep sending my 16-year-old daughter these, uh, these ads for pregnancy products? Are you trying to encourage her to be, to get pregnant? And, uh, you know, he was, he was very concerned about this, and, um, uh, and the uh, the guy he talked to said, "Well, I'll look. I'll look into it, and uh, probably threw it on his desk and never looked at it again." But he got another call from the same guy two months later to say, "Oh, we understand now. My daughter was pregnant. Well, what it was was she had bought some kind of special cream to to uh, rub on her rapidly growing belly, mm -hmm. and from that, the drugstore chain." Concluded. Uh, con not necessarily concluded that she was pregnant, c concluded that based on a previous purchase of this product, she was likely to purchase this product, this product, and this product. But Got that's it. at the Amazon.com level. People yeah. who liked this will probably like that. It never made the intellectual loop to she's pregnant and there's going to be a baby. It just said people who buy this frequently buy that later. Well, here's another... If, and, and yes, that, that is a true story, not apocryphal. I believe it was Target. <clears throat> I thought and, it was and, Target, yeah. too, yeah. But here's, here's another fascinating thing about NSA, right? They don't just do exfiltration. They do infiltration, right? So they don't just read all your data. They have the technical capability to put stuff there, too. Mm -hmm. To create a false picture of who you actually are? to put false stuff on your drive if they should want to do it. Mm -hmm. I suspect that's not the kind of thing that they're going to do frequently. It's, the kind, it's kind of like when, um, when the U.S. had the Enigma codes, but they still let you know, assets be destroyed because they didn't want the Japanese to know they had the Enigma codes. You know, eventually the genie's going to be out of the bottle. Eventually everyone's going to know. But it's a really useful tool while everyone doesn't quite know. Mm -hmm. um, but I... at, at this point... At, at have, this point, any, anything on a hard drive, you can't assume it's true. I don't care you know, what the forensics are. Uh, it it can have been placed there. Well, unfortunately, they couldn't make a good argument for that during the uh, Ross Ulbricht trial. He went to prison as a result of the FBI claiming he had some stuff on his hard drive. Uh, yeah, although I don't know that the jury thought that the FBI couldn't have done it or wouldn't have done it. I, I don't mean, think they were given the presentation from any witnesses to suggest that it could have been anything other than legitimately found there. I think the defense see, was prevented from calling certain witnesses who may have been able to testify to that. 
Well, that's that's very unfortunate because certainly, I mean, if your computer is in the hands of a computer expert, which is what people who do uh, computer forensics are, certainly they can plant anything oh, yeah. anytime they want to. Uh, and just as they can, you know, tamper with physical evidence and and do whatever else will will make their uh, whoever's paying them happy. So and there is an unfortunate level of trust for government. I mean, I watched an FBI agent perjure himself mm -hmm. at a trial where I was the defendant about a conversation to which I was a party. So there's absolutely no question in my mind that these people are scum because I've yeah. seen them do it to me. They'll do whatever it takes to get their conviction. Dennis, creepy phone call tonight. Appreciate it. I think it's important <laughs> to bring this stuff up to people so they can be aware. And thank you for making it. The toll-free number is 855-450- Free 855-450-3733. Well, you don't need any high-tech surveillance to know that the man in Charlotte, North Carolina, in a neighborhood who has been standing out in front of his, uh, essentially right in his doorway, buck naked, uh, you don't need any computer program to figure this one out. Uh, his neighbors are upset. They've been taking pictures. And we'll uh, tell you what can be done about this here in moments. 855-450 free. I have a 70-pound Royal Standard Poodle. Her name is Zelia. And three years ago, Zelia's ears were a mess. She would have sticky, gooey, smelly discharge in her ears. We took Zelia to the vet seven times of $150 every time. The vet offered no success at all. My wife and I are driving, and we hear some people on the radio saying D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Six days after I started feeding her Dinovite, my dog's ear problems were cured. My dog no longer yelps. She can be petted without pain, and it's because Dinovite made our dog healthy again. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us... The future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Every day you make investment decisions. 
When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves or bring up whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, we'll tell you about the naked man in a Charlotte, North Carolina neighborhood uh, who has not left his house but has hung out in the doorway. And now, is hung out intentional or, or could we look at our <laughs> phrasing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely uh, letting the neighbors see all of him. And uh, we will uh, tell you what can happen to him here in a moment. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I don't know what the proposed rules are on nudity at Fort Galt, but uh, you can go check it out. They've got a little community that they're beginning online. What the idea behind Fort Galt is is to have these this this project it's it's more like a it's like a ski resort or um you know like a big uh, a small condominium complex that's going to be built by Bensonwood it's going to be in uh, southern chile and the idea is to have a bug out space uh, for people who are from north america who might want to have some place outside of the country for whatever reason they might want to have it and it's pretty cool they've got uh, the, the idea is to have loads of uh, tools in a maker space and a restaurant and a bunch of places to relax and socialize really sort of small living quarters they've their lowest unit is somewhere around ten thousand dollars so it's it's not that big of a deal fortgult.com to check it out for yourself there's only room for a hundred people so don't wait until the place is full and remember it's summer in Chile when it's winter in North America I think that's kind of important uh, you know as far as their choice goes it's worth checking out Fort Galt.com. All right, so let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Uh, the Naked Guy story, that's still to come here tonight. Plus, was the Stop the Robots group that we talked about earlier a hoax? Let's talk to Tommy first in New Jersey. Tommy, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Rich, Paul, and Mark. Yeah, I love your show. The name is Tony. Oh, sorry, Tony. They must have spelled it wrong there. Go ahead. Uh, that's fine. Well, uh, here's the radical idea I have. Everything you're talking about is uh, in the context of a closed system where everything is connected. No matter what you're talking about in technology, everything has a connection, whether it be logical or however you want to make the, the verbal connection, it's all connected. However, when you get to abstract thought, you come into phenomena. So the robots, if they function at the highest level that we ever could create them, they're still going to be in a closed system. Because if I quote Shakespeare, who said, if I were bound in a nutshell, uh, if I declared myself the king of infinite space, were it not that I have had dreams, <laughs> You're never going to have a robot with an abstract thought, and it is only the abstract thought that will lead creativity to a place where a closed system could never find that road. Because all these roads that are connected in functionalism is where we are today. We all become mechanical sheep because... Without that creativity, aesthetically, there's an aesthetic mentality and a theoretical mentality. When you live in the mechanical mentality, you cannot get out of that. It, it just perseverates. You can't go anywhere. You can make a better refrigerator, better this, better that. It's all utility. But how do you create a higher civilization, strictly not on functionalism, 
course, the Romans tried to do it. They made all kind of inventions. So even Newton, the great, great Newton, believe it or not, when he was in school, he was not studying mathematics. He was a philosophy, a, a natural philosophy student, and he studied Aristotle. Well, so where are we today? Here's what I'd warn you on know? this, is that we throughout humankind have attempted to separate ourselves from the animal by saying, well, we're the only ones who use tools. We're not the true. only. What's that? That's not true. Right. I know it's not okay. true. I'm just saying that I'm giving examples of right. the things that people have said about humans up to this point. You know, we're the only ones that have emotions, or the, you know, this, this whole list and litany of things that only humans are capable of. And you have... The key here, the, the the pivotal point that you've made is essentially only humans will ever be able to handle abstract thought. And I think it's the last bail of whack. I think it's the last thing that we'll hold on to. But I don't know how long we'll hold on to it compared to machines or, you know, mm. upon what basis can you make that claim? Well, right, Tony's Coco the gorilla uh, was <laughs> a gorilla who was trained in sign language by a psychologist. And uh, she... Uh, Coco learned to speak pretty well in sign language and was eventually pre presented to some newspaper reporters who wanted to test whether she was capable of abstract thought. And so uh, the newspaper reporter asked her, which of your uh, trainers do you like better? And Coco signed back, bad question. Um, so not in poetry. She can't be a Shakespeare. That's my whole point. You can't have an aesthetic mentality if you function according to a closed system. There is well, no. You interrupted. I'm Rich. not understanding that. I'd like to that, hear the rest uh, of the story, uh, Rich. Well, well, that that Bad was question. the story that okay. that the uh, that the animal showed that not only was it responding to things, but that it was able to look at the question and say, I don't want to answer this question because it would hurt somebody's feelings, mm. which is a pretty abstract uh, piece of thinking. Yeah, I think there's a lot of examples of that. And I mean, if you're saying that it can't be Shakespeare, I mean, obviously it's prose is not going to reach the level of Shakespeare. But, you know, there have been... Neither does anybody else's. No, there have been <laughs> examples of uh, animals who have created art, uh, you know, artwork, abstract art and things like that. And uh, they don't get intellectual property credit for it, though. Well, that's true. Tommy, I don't know how you can just say that, you know, obviously it's your belief, but I think that, you know, time's going to likely prove you wrong uh, that robots won't be, that robots, you say, will never be capable or artificial intelligence will never be capable of abstract thought. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to put a lot of work into proving you wrong on that. And uh, well, let me yeah. redefine what abstract is. Abstract is a form that has no shape. Words have shape. So when ab something abstract, like a cloud, you can't see it, what it's going to become until it becomes it. I'm quoting Aristotle. Mm -hmm. the, the becoming is something that can't be perceived. Now, the closest thing we have to that in time, in, in terms of logical abstract thought, is our whole banking system is based on prime numbers. And you can never predict a prime number as it keeps going and going because we don't have a, a, a completeness, according to uh, Kurt Gerdel, who said all mathematics is incomplete. That's an abstract thought because he finally realized that mathematics is an open-ended system. Thanks, Tommy, for and your call and thoughts. Uh, very deep, uh, whether you agree with them or not. 855-450 free. Rich is deep in thought. We'll get his thoughts on this here in a moment. Uh, you can share yours with us as well. This is Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. 
General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free. Share us, uh, share with us whatever you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Our last caller says he doesn't think robots will ever have the capability to have abstract thoughts. You can share your thoughts with us, 855-450-FREE. ExpressCoin, the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrency with money order, check, or wire transfer. Just start off over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the United States or Canada, ExpressCoin.com can help you get Bitcoin or those other coins. 
Uh, and you can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app, which you can download over at ExpressCoin.com. And when you're ordering, you you if you want, you can use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all, which is a great deal. Uh, I mean, normally ExpressCoin has a very, very low fee, but you have no fee if you use code FTL on up to $40 worth of a purchase. That's ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL as we continue here. Uh, Rich Paul, you looked like you were deep in thought there at the end of that last call, and I didn't know if there was uh, something else that you wanted to add to the conversation about artificial intelligence and what its capabilities might be in the long run. Well, the the big question to me is still volition. I'm not worried about computers getting angry. I'm not... Comp- uh, worried about computers deciding that humans are unnecessary because, you know, everything is unnecessary to them. They don't care if they continue to function or cease functioning. They are nihilists. They care about nothing. <laughs> um, but I think the real threat from AI that we're going to see long before we see computers with volition is program is computers that are intentionally programmed by the kind of people who shoot up high schools uh, Mm -hmm. or the kind of people who knock down buildings to go out and intelligently uh, seek and destroy either random people or specific people or specific categories of people. Uh, I think that is going to be our first killer robot. And it is beyond uh, what the capabilities of, of drones. There are people obviously concerned about Uh, robots in the Middle East, but those robots are still being piloted by humans. Right. And it's when they cease to be piloted by humans that you can kill the guy who bought, who built the thing, it's still going. Uh, And that's something that you can't do with current weapons. If you kill the guy operating a weapon, the weapon stops operating, even if it's a drone today. But let me ask you this. If they can build a robot that's good at hunting down people, specific groups of people or whatever it is this terrorist robot that you're talking about is, can't they build robots that are good at hunting down robots that hunt down people? Uh, yes, and that would be another arms link, arms race like we've always seen in the, the computer business. The copy protection thing we used to do in the 70s and 80s when they would find a way to uh, make a disc hinky so you couldn't copy it. And then we'd go in with Pirate Harbor and, and Cracker and find ways to copy that hin- hinky mm-hmm. disc because they have to leave it coherent enough to be read or you can't play the game uh that went back and forth uh for a long time until eventually the companies just gave up and realized (laughs) they couldn't ever beat the hackers it's true well they haven't (laughs) given up i mean there's still uh, new copy prevention technologies being developed but they're always Mm -hmm. being topped within you know days of their release uh yeah that's true they they still make some pro forma attempts at you know serial numbers and that kind of thing i mean like i was thinking like blu-ray for instance you can't just easily copy a blu-ray likely i mean there's there are anti-copying measures involved in that but there are ways to overcome all of those things right you can extract the video and then you know reformat it and put it in uh, put it on a different disc well if you have if you're able to extract sufficient uh information to play the movie you are able to extract sufficient information to record the movie and if you can't then you've got a useless disc aaron is with us uh in saint george utah listening to kznu aaron you're on free talk live with ian rich paul and mark yeah guys thanks for taking the call so um what i wanted to do was kind of kind of shift the train of thought we were with the last caller we were trying to decide hey does AI have the ability to be creative or be abstract or not? And we're sitting here saying, yes, they will. No, they won't. Or, you know, we we're diverse on our idea when it comes to a disagreement on that matter. But what I would like to say is I think that there will be absolutely some creativity that is brought to the table by AI. And it's really what it comes down to is will humans value the creativity from computers more or less? than the traditional means of creativity. So I think yeah. humans will still be contributing, and computers will start to contribute uh, contribute at a, at a more exponential rate. And, um, you know, they may be able to tap into us a little bit more and use big data and say, hey, well, most humans like to see this type of creativity, and so therefore I'm going to 
run more randomness to find more modes of this particular creativity and kind of get our attention more. But mm. I, I definitely don't think that humans are going to just stop being creative. And I don't think that computers are not going to be able to ever introduce anything creative into the system. It just, it just doesn't work that way. So I think the balance is, will humans uh, be able to uh, uh, get to a point where, you know, they get to decide between the creativity of AI is producing or the creativity of humans producing and what applications they want to use the particular creative modes in, in their lives or in business. And I, and I, I just want to throw that out there that, you know, instead of thinking so, you know, dichotomously, yes mm-hmm. or no, let's just look at it in terms of, hey, everybody's coming to the table. And the, the question is, what are we going to value more? Oh, yeah. And I think that's an excellent question. And I think, of course, the answer is going to be people are going to value it differently, right? So some people are going to look at uh, whatever creativity is coming from machines and they're going to value that very highly and there are going to be others who look down their nose at them because it's coming from a machine and they're not as uh, you know as uh, genuine or real as uh, as humans well, even right like, currently um, you can sort of raise the price tag on some things just by saying it's from a particular place or a particular group of people made or it's it handmade or, um, or something like that you know if it's made in the United by States by the humble people of wherever right to quote fight club <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I remember there was a time when uh, basically, if you wanted to have a beauty product, it pretty much had to be from Europe, right? Um, so now, eh, not so much. That's not the the thing. But it, but you know, in other places and other types of places, it matters where a car is from. A European car is worth more than a U.S. car in the United States, and maybe some other countries around the world too. Correct, and maybe maybe just like on the most fundamental level, we can break down like this. You know, a particular artist may actually uh, hand draw or hand paint a particular piece and that original is worth a tremendous amount of more money than a print basically a replication of that particular creativity um, but uh, but it, it really is a replication and and the same thing goes with like maybe a, a carving or a model you know an antique that is found from the pyramids of, of Egypt or or the Mayans of a particular piece actually hand molded the original is worth uh, many, many, many times more than the uh, reproduction made in a 3D printer. Yeah, um, yeah, or furniture is another good example of what you're talking about, something a bit more utilitarian um, that uh, people tend to want that made by a craftsman or something like that. An Amish person. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, these days... Uh, shakers. Yeah, well, yes, uh, shakers are all gone. Um, it's <laughs> shaker-style furniture now. But um, Their philosophy was always shaking. <laughs> <laughs> that whole not having uh, sex thing is pretty... Uh, do it. It, it, Shaky gonna, ground. It's going to ruin your movement, I'll tell you. Aaron, good call tonight, man. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Thanks, I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know, we've, we've seen uh, you know discrepancies in the art world also where they've got computer-generated art now and you know drawing that's done on a computer. Some people kind of look down their nose at that. They prefer a hand-drawn uh, piece of artwork or you know hand-drawn animation, for instance. You hardly see it these days. And when you do see it, it's uh, it's somewhat noteworthy. I mean, yeah, they're pouring a lot more time into it. Is it better, though, because of that? Not necessarily, but it does have kind of a unique look to it. You know, following that shaker, uh, the shaker furniture thing, I had an opportunity to make a joke about aesthetics made by aesthetics. <laughs> and I <laughs> missed it! I mean, aesthetics? Aesthetics is the way something looks, but there's another word very similar that means people that don't have sex. Okay, we'll come back with more here. Not an aesthetic. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cat fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more logs to go strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour. Two times faster than Claritin and stays strong for 24 hours. It's relief when the pollen's off the chart strong, even in the convertible. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster. Nothing's stronger. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. Kay Oliver is part of the Twayambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. 
By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Post free to auction and free to bid at BitBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got a website. You can go there, get interactive, submit content, uh, stuff you find interesting, whatever you might want us to talk about on the radio. You can submit there right to the front page of the website. Go to freetalklive.com. Coming up, the naked man in his front doorway. He's been there off and on for a decade, and the neighbors say they're fed up. We'll tell you more about that here in a moment. But uh, first, a correction. Mark, you were making a joke at the end of the last segment, and one of the words you used was confusing to me because you were mispronouncing it, and I <laughs> I pronounced it correctly, but you made it sound like there was a third word. So you were saying what exactly? I want to make sure I was this straight. Uh, just you know, just saying that we were, when we were talking about Shaker Furniture and the sensibilities surrounding it, that there was an opportunity for a joke about aesthetics made mm-hmm. by aesthetics. But you didn't pronounce ascetic correctly, even though I thought I knew what you were saying. I said, do you mean ascetic? And you I couldn't said, hear what you'd said. Okay, well, oh, okay. And, and you said, no, you just find this other word as only being without sex, which being an ascetic isn't just about being without sex. It's about being without any kind of uh, indulgence whatsoever. So sex would be there. Tasty food, I think, would be included mm. in that. Uh, anything that's interesting Material or well. exciting. Yeah, anything that's uh, that's fun or <laughs> or exciting. Of course, all of this begs a question. If if a word is both mispronounced and misdefined, does it remain the same word? <laughs> or 
<laughs> Does it become mm. a new word? <laughs> well, somehow new words get created. Uh, anyway, the definition of aesthetic here from Google is characterized, this is the adjective, characterized by or suggesting the practice of severe self-discipline and abstention from all forms of indulgence, typically for religious reasons. So severe self-discipline and abstention. These guys are a boring bunch and uh, you were talking about the Shakers, Mark, which was a religious group that essentially uh, got rid of themselves because they well, wouldn't have sex. That's not why they the Shakers went away. No, uh, the really? Shakers, yeah, up until that's going to do it. If you don't have sex, then you're going to go away. Well, unless you get converts, people. they they True. Well, so there were uh, yes. Uh, so basically, it was the Industrial Revolution that uh, threw the Shakers into a tailspin. What they were was a convent a commune mm -hmm. um and they were a religious commune created by quaker spinoffs and they you know they did dances and stuff like that first they were um you know unchoreographed dances and then they became very uh, regimented over time but they would take in the uh basically the orphans from town prior to there being governmental agencies that would attempt to take care of this stuff essentially the the shakers did it and so they took in the orphans and that sort of thing when the Industrial Revolution comes along, um, men, uh, in which the Shakers lost their men before they lost their women, men found that they could go to work in cities and make money and have a family rather than sort of subsisting in these, uh, you know, religious uh, communes. And, uh, you know, because of the Gilded Age from 1870 to 1890, real wages in this country doubled. And... That's the time that the Shakers basically just the whole thing bottomed out. The last Shakers died, I believe, in the la within the last 10 years. Really? Yes. Could you give me that period of wage doubling again? It's called the Gilded Age uh, okay. it, or the Age of the Robber Barons, uh, depending on how you want to call it. But uh, So they were able to— Okay, lazy, lazy see, I was thinking that was a period you were referring to. I read a wonderful book when I was in jail called The Myth of the Robber Barons. Um and uh, I can't remember the, the name of the author, but it's a fantastic book that talks about um, what they did to prices and how prices collapsed during the same period that you're talking about. So you had doubling wages at the same time you had falling prices. That's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Burton Folsom, the author yes. of The Myth of the Robber Barons. Yeah, which... I, I read Tom Wood's book, uh, um Politically Incorrect Guide to American, American History. History. And yeah. then I went through the uh, the bibliography and started just ordering books off it. Uh, that was cool. one of them. So if you want to go and get that book or many others, you can, of course, go through Amazon by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Enter Amazon through the links you'll find there, and Free Talk Live gets a cut. I'm shocked, though, Mark, that uh, you're saying the Shakers died off within the last decade? Well, the last Shakers died off within the last decade or so. Meaning they were able to actually recruit uh, new Shakers to to get through the last century? That's amazing. Well, um, if you had an orphan that was uh, picked up by the Shakers in 1920 mm -hmm. and she lived to be 90 years old, yeah. she would have died in 2010. Yeah, good point. All right, let's continue here. Uh, Ralph is on the line in Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ralph. Hey, I'm sitting here listening to your uh, conversation and your callers. And as I was doing some work, I was pondering. And I started looking at both sides of the the uh, phenomena of AI. Okay, now you had one caller call in and talking about abstract thought. And then you had uh, the other guy sit there and make a comment about the gorilla and so forth, which immediately I, I try and ponder these things to my what happens in my life. Okay, now I had a I got turkeys. Okay, and I have Meniere's disease, and when the barometer changes, I can just boom hit the ground and not not move. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. This happened to me, and my turkeys came over from wandering in the field. Came over. The female got on top of me. The male walked around me, and she was letting. I could hear her. She's letting out the distress call until my wife came out and, and took care of the situation. Wow. Wow. So. So that's some You're lucky kind you didn't of, have pigs. That, Is her name Lassie? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the no. pig comment about, Mark? What, uh, oh, the pigs that eat him. Really? Well, listen, I'm, I'm trying to be serious here. No, no, no I believe you. Oh, God. I, I, I believe it be absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't that be an abstract thought where they, they, they actually saw me in distress 
and came over and and did something about it. I mean, you see what I'm saying? There was thought there. Yeah. Because there's been many a times where I've worked out in the yard and just laid down, took a nap in the yard, and they didn't do nothing. Mm. But this time they actually did took took initiative. Is now, it abstract also, thought or is it empathy? Uh, well, either way, it's thought. Yeah. Well, the point it's, uh, is, oh, I believe animals think. The point is, is that, you know, we'll go on to the next caller. He said he was talking about values and talking about will we value what computers do. I got. I want to look at the other side of that question. If if computers get that or AI gets that advanced, will it value us? Well, that was one of the big questions that uh, was being discussed last night. You know, will uh, will computers or AI look uh, down its nose eventually at people? You know, and and, and then you got the old. Here's the old one. You know, if you ever played golf or uh, anything like that, there's there's a thing called Murphy's Law. Yep. Okay, how about that? Uh, these are machines, and Murphy Law would come into effect because then you got to stop and think about human nature. Who There's going to be somebody at some point in charge of this whole uh, uploading, downloading, whatever, and is he going to be in the right frame of mind, or is he going to try and put something in a back door or whatever where – where it kind of goes haywire, and uh, then we're all going to get the you-know-what. Good call, Ralph. Thanks for making it tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, and, you know, the, a lot of these thoughts, a lot of these questions, we're going to come back around to them, especially as artificial intelligence improves, as robotics improve. There's going to be more of these discussions that are happening. And, uh, you know, as you pointed out, Mark, this progress is inevitable, so you better start thinking about it now. A great uh, piece of literature on this is a Star Trek The Next Generation episode called The Measure of a Man, when they try to determine whether Data is actually a creature deserving of rights. Mm. And it's really a, a nice piece of literature. Doesn't he get... Uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't follow Star Trek closely, but I've seen some of the movies. Doesn't he actually get emotions at some point? In that series? Uh, Some sort emotions of a chip? come and go for him. There's an emotion chip, but it's got issues. So uh, he puts it so in does mine. and takes it out. Yeah, I see. Yeah, well, that's the thing is all emotion chips have issues, don't they? <laughs> 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 they, they kind, emotions kind of are issues a lot of the time. But. The actor who does Data apparently has said he's not doing it anymore. Doing what? Data. Oh, well, that, that was Brent Spiner. Long over. I mean, uh, when's the last time they did a movie f with that? I don't know, True. but uh, you know, I'm sure that like all uh, Captain Kirk rode those movies down to That's the. That's true. You know, they he, did bring him back again and again. I mean, they even had Spock in the new Star Trek. Yes. Yeah. Which was kind of cool. Anyway, there's more coming up here on Free Talk Live, Charlotte, North Carolina. The story from WBTV.com, where residents in a Charlotte neighborhood say they are fed up with a neighbor they say stands at the front door of his home naked. And he's been doing this, apparently, for approximately a decade. Now the neighbors are sick and tired of it, and they want police to do something, but, well, we'll tell you what the they police... They wanted police to do something a decade ago. Yeah, we'll tell you what the police uh, are saying about it here in a moment. And, of course, you can take control of the airwaves to bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. Plus, since we're talking tech, Mark, you've got a story that says self-driving cars may not become a reality. Yep. Uh, so we'll see what the opinion is there. And of course, you're welcome to share your thoughts with us at 855-450-FREE. There's more Free Talk Live on the way. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,156, no change. Silver opened at $15.69, up four cents. And Bitcoin is trading around $288.32. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. In the news, the American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit in New York's Southern District, seeking records related to drone strikes from the Justice and Defense Departments and the CIA. The ACLU says the government has failed to respond to year-old requests for records. The civil rights group said the Obama administration has failed to deliver on promises of transparency on drone strikes. Digital privacy groups are condemning a new bill they say poses threats to whistleblowers and gives the U.S. government expanded access to digital information of private individuals. Last Thursday, the Senate Intelligence Committee approved the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act of 2015 with a vote of 14 to 1. The ACLU, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Freedom Works, and the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers were part of a large coalition of groups who spoke to the committee warning about the dangers of the bill. CISA would allow the government to use private data gathered from companies in criminal proceedings without a warrant. Earlier this month, the Center for Democracy and Technology wrote a letter stating, quote, the lack of use limitations creates yet another loophole for law enforcement to conduct backdoor searches on Americans, end quote. The White House has announced that its Office of Administration is no longer subject to Freedom of Information Act request regulations. The White House said the changes were consistent with court rulings that have held the office is not subject to FOIA. The Office of Administration handles several duties, including archiving emails. Many offices in the White House are exempt from the FOIA, but the Office of Administration has responded to FOIA requests for 30 years. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by CoinArch, offering innovative online trading solutions for Bitcoin. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX and get free brokerage for the first seven days. It only takes $10 to start an account. That's CoinArch.com. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? Well, for a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to say big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Federal Bureau of Prisons has canceled its contract with the Management and Training Corporation for its for-profit prison in Raymondville City, Texas. The contract means the Willis County Correctional Center has shut down and about 400 prison workers are out of work in an area with one of Texas' highest unemployment rates. The facility has been plagued with problems, most recently on February 20th, as inmates rioted and took control of the prison. A 2014 report by the American Civil Liberties Union found that people incarcerated in private prisons are often abused and lacking oversight by the Bureau of Prisons. As the Texas Senate debated open carry legislation, the Huey P. Newton Gun Club marched outside carrying rifles. The Dallas-based club is named after the co-founder of the Black Panther Party. 
Group member Eric Coffrey says the gun club stands in solidarity with all people who are marching and who are patrolling against police terrorism. In other open carry news, the Texas Senate passed legislation which would allow for open carry of weapons in public spaces. With a vote of 20 to 11, the Senate passed SB 17, which would allow concealed weapons permit holders to openly carry their handguns. Texas state law currently allows for open carrying of rifles and shotguns, but not handguns. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat also comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference, March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Join scores of Bitcoin experts and enthusiasts from around the world for talks, networking, and a million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. Tickets on sale now at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use coupon code LibertyBeat for $25 off your ticket. That's coupon code LibertyBeat. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 17, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Joe Chris Beckman, from claim jumpers to politicians to coyotes, the straight shooter that shook up the presidential race is taking them all on and licking them good. Hello, Joe. Who and what's behind these potato monkey shines? Well, these scientists are trying to mass produce potatoes that are more resistant to disease, but they're doing so in potentially dangerous ways that alter their DNA. Tater disease, and what brung us Irish? Right. You give a Tater man's constitution, you can bet he's coming to play old Dota call. Yes, well, nature's revenge could come in the form of disease now you listen or to allergens. Me, taters. You got gave a mind of a tater. Joe, please, l l let me make my point. You're tater minded and you're looking to infiltrate old Joe's cabin, but you're too late. No. Now you get out All or right, I Jode. slice your tater heart out and fry it up on my okay, grill. Okay, Joe. Now you all stay close here. Gonna have a jug band back here, and if Jasper don't let me strum the worst part, we're gonna resort to cutting. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, launching into the third hour here. Plenty to talk about your calls, of course. You can make uh, make them about anything you'd like to discuss. We've had more tech talk tonight with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, talking more about the Stop the Robots group, and uh, again, some of the similar threads. But different people commenting, so you can share your thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. And Rich Paul joining us here tonight. Hey, Rich. Hey, how you doing? Well, everything's okay. We're going to continue taking your phone calls and thoughts. Plus, we'll talk about the naked man that I have been teasing all night long. You've been here. teasing You've naked been man? You've been teasing a naked man all night. <laughs> Poor guy. He must be so frustrated. That's Ian for you. We'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it. He's been standing in his front doorway for off and on for near, nearly a decade. But first, let's go to SciFace in San Francisco. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, SciFace. Okay, so yeah. I called it yesterday when you guys were talking about artificial intelligence, and we were kind of discussing sort of what is and what is not artificial intelligence and what's the difference between something that's artificial intelligence versus, you know, a simple program that is doing a brute force search over all the possible actions. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to use the example of a program that can play tic-tac-toe to sort of illustrate the difference between artificial intelligence versus brute force. So, you know, I think most people who are listening now probably know how to play tic-tac-toe, and probably most of them know how to play it well enough to where if they kept playing, they would never lose, basically, because, it's, you know, it's a very simple game, and... Once you play it a few times, you pretty much get. I'm sorry, Hello. what was this game again? Tic Tac Toe. Tic Tac Toe. You pretty much okay. have to be nine to lose Tic Tac Toe, right? Yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's a very simple game. So, if there's a program that can play Tic Tac Toe and either always wins or the game ends in a draw, would you consider that program to be artificial intelligence? Well, I mean, as or, we discussed... Uh, like, again, it would be a very, very simple example of it. But, you know, is that program some level of intelligence to be able to play the game? Uh, 
I would say no, because the big thing about artificial intelligence is the ability to learn things that do not come from a programmer. And, okay. you know, I can write you a program that will win tic-tac-toe to the optimal possibility. There's only a few, you know, to the to the theoretical maximum. I'm, um, I don't know exactly. I, I, I'm really not hip to the statistics on tic-tac-toe, well, the truth uh, be told. But it couldn't but be that it difficult. There's it only so won't many be positions. able to teach itself to beat you at whist. Uh, when you when when somebody can write a program that can play half a dozen games or a dozen games and that goes out and teaches itself a 13th game, that's when you've got an intelligent game playing program. OK, so Rich has stolen a whole lot of my thunder. In the last <laughs> Sorry, bro. But, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. But the. Um, oh, well, I mean, uh, I guess. uh that was an answer from Rich, but what about you guys, Ian Mark? Do you think that would be artificial intelligence? Well, I was—I uh, I might have conceded until I heard what Rich said. Oh, well, yeah, I like right. the way Rich puts it. I mean, certainly that is uh, what Rich described is an, is an actual intelligence that which could actually teach yeah. itself, right? Mm. And uh, and so we talked about the uh, the singularity, and that's you know generally considered the point at which. Uh, machines can you know, essentially program themselves, and so that would be the, that level of artificial intelligence. But then, I guess another well, question would be: Would that actually be intelligence? You know, once you get well, to the point where, uh, where, where you know, this AI can upgrade itself, can teach itself new things, is it actually intelligence instead of artificial well, intelligence? You're saying if it gets to the point, and actually that's already happened, um, and I'll get to that in a second, but. Uh, just to quickly, basically, um, finish up the idea of tic-tac-toe, since Rich already got through most of it. Um, uh, if you actually look at all the possible positions of a tic-tac-toe board, there are only about 5,200 that can actually happen in a... Um, there are only 5,200 that can actually happen in a real game. Okay. And so you could write a program that's basically a dictionary. Basically, you type in a certain position, and it will look that up and give you what the best move is. So, yep. I mean, it's really it's as simple as an actual dictionary program where you put in a word, and it gives you a definition. Yeah. Hmm. And so that I would not consider artificial intelligence because it's, it's not it's just it's looking up something. Whereas, if you had a program that did not know anything about tic-tac-toe and you set it loose and it learned how to play tic-tac-toe, hmm. then I would consider that intelligent. And even though both programs, at the end of the day, they're both playing tic-tac-toe and they're both playing it perfectly where they always win or it always ends up in a draw, I would consider one to be intelligent and one not to be intelligent based on how they're doing it. Well, again, you know, hmm. so it's, it's not just the action that they're doing. You know, it, it looks intelligent if it's just you know, look it up. But isn't the – uh, okay, so there. again, uh, you know, the definition of artificial, uh, you know, there's different synonyms for that, and one of them is false. Uh, so, I mean, hmm. couldn't you argue that the tic-tac-toe robot that you're talking about or the program – is actually artificial intelligence because it's simulating intelligence. It's not mm. really intelligence. That's, it's not artificial really intelligence, though. It's a giant table lookup. Um, right. And, I mean, no, I understand how it works. No, right. I'm, I'm following how, how it works behind the yeah. scenes. But to the mm -hmm. uninitiated, it uh -huh. appears as though it's intelligence, right? Oh, this thing can play tic-tac-toe. Wow. All right. You know? uh -huh. Well, a person with a really great vocabulary... But that doesn't make it artificial intelligence. That just makes them unknowledgeable as to what artificial intelligence is. Um, right. People who administer <laughs> IQ tests have had a very difficult time distinguishing pe between people who have a very good vocabulary and people who are actually intelligent. Usually, there's a lot of overlap in those mm -hmm. uh, in those areas, but you, it's quite it's possible, right, to have a good vocabulary without being particularly adept at sort of problem solving or something like okay. that. Yep. And um, th this is one of the things you're sort of dealing with here. Is, is yeah, it'll look like intelligence, it'll function like intelligence, but it may not actually be intelligence. 
Well, then would it be artificial by definition if it's not actually intelligence? It's pseudo. Uh, okay. If it seems like something well, and it's not, it's it, pseudo. Um, it's certainly interesting to have a discussion about you know, what is intelligence, what's artificial, what's real. And, and actually, after the show yesterday, I saw someone post a comment on Facebook in that, you know, saying that artificial intelligence is not really the right term. It should be called something like technological intelligence to kind of distinguish it from human intelligence. So it's, it, it's not that it's artificial because, you know, is it really artificial or is it how certain things are also done in the human brain? We're not really sure about that. Well, that's why I'm arguing so, that right yeah. now artificial intelligence is a good term for it because once it does get to right. the point of being able to program itself, it will be intelligence because then mm -hmm. it is doing things on its own volition. It's not doing what humans have programmed right. it to do, essentially. And I think and you're right. Calling it technological intelligence is more I, – I think that's that's a good idea too. You, well, you also have and to define – oh, You also have to define – <laughs> I'm doing this all night. You also have to right. uh, define artificial. I mean, is a beaver dam natural or artificial? Well, it depends on uh, which definition of artificial, I guess, you use. I mean, one of the top uh, definitions here is made by human skill. Okay, in which case, um, you know, a beaver dam would be considered natural, but yet something built it. Okay, so apparently if Martians, by that definition, built something, it would be natural. Even if they were an intelligent mm. life life on their own planet, I, I, we know there are no Martians. But, um, you know, that's a very, it's it's not a very useful definition necessarily. Side phase, any final I thoughts? I want to make one more quick thing before you guys go to break. Uh, you were talking about a system that the program itself. And just last month, there was a program uh, um, that was shown play, I think it was 49 different games without the game actually being distracted. Send me a link so on that one, Sideface. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though. Documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing 
looking to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you are invited here, toll-free, to bring up whatever's on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And you, of course, can bring up anything you want. You can also uh, protect yourself online by using ProXPN. And you need to protect yourself online because you can't expect your internet service provider to do it. They're probably one of the people violating your uh, supposed privacy. You know, they're likely logging every website that you visit and keeping that history for years in some cases. Plus, if you're sitting at a coffee shop or anywhere on your laptop or Wi-Fi enabled device, there could very well be people sniffing your packets, trying to grab credit card information or logins, uh, usernames, and passwords. You can stop that from happening by using ProXPN. They encrypt your internet connection. It's a virtual private network, and it's global. There are locations all around the world that you can connect to, uh, servers run by ProXPN. It creates an encrypted tunnel between those two points, and then uh, they send out your data to the rest of the internet from that location. So you can connect to the Netherlands, you can connect to a server in Singapore and uh, London, and of course there's some U.S. ones as well, uh, but you get different levels of sort of uh, legal protections in other jurisdictions like the Netherlands, for instance. So when you're privately torrenting with ProXPN, which is one of the features that you can use with their premium account, you'll want to connect to their Netherlands server to avoid any DMCA notices or anything like that that might come about because uh, there's more privacy protection uh, for your internet connections in the Netherlands, at least as far as file sharing, from what I understand. So proxpn.com slash FTL. Go there, get started, use code FTL50 when you're ready to sign up for their premium account, and that gets you 50% off the price of their annual account, which is about 5 bucks a month when you break down the, the price point. So code FTL50, and by the way, their app's available for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android devices, and even Linux. Uh, so it's very easy. You just go and download their software, and then when you're ready to upgrade, there's a free account, but when you're ready to upgrade, go with the premium account and use code FTL50. You'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, you can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, go to proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits, unlike your internet service provider. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Don't forget code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So, uh, the naked man that we've talked about not in any detail yet. Here you go. The story from WBTV in Charlotte, North Carolina. Residents in a Charlotte neighborhood say they are fed up with a neighbor they say stands at the front door of his home naked. But police say he's not doing anything illegal. People in the Cardinal Glen neighborhood in North Charlotte say the man has been doing this for nearly 10 years. And on Friday, they called police again. Again. 
Yep. Picolia Therat said, I was rolling out the trash can on Friday, and I just happened to look over there, and he was standing there buck naked. It's not good to have people walking around here naked like that. A grown man like that with all these kids out here, you know? Neighbors say the man opens his door in the nude and even talks on his cell phone. All in, <laughs> <laughs> and they got a picture of it. Uh, all in clear view of his neighbors. They're disgusted and fed up. Adriana Harris said, quote, because my daughter grew up in this neighborhood, even this week she was home from spring break, but she would call me at work and say, Mom, I'm getting ready to go outside, but let me check if he's out there first. That's how bad it is in the neighborhood. Harris says she's called police numerous times over the last 10 years to complain, but nothing has been done. Spokeswoman for the police department confirms officers were called to the home on Friday, saying, quote, since it's not a criminal incident, it was documented in the call for service, but there's no report. The spokesbureaucrat told WBTV she added that officers confirmed with the magistrate the incident did not rise to a level of a charge since the man was on his own property. She said, quote, after consulting with the magistrate and police attorney, unless he is outside of his home, he cannot be charged, she said. She says officials are looking to, quote, additional options, unquote, to help resolve the issue. According to North Carolina law, a person can only be charged with indecent exposure if they, quote, willfully expose the private parts of his or her person in any public place and in the presence of any other person or persons. So if other people are around and you're in public in North Carolina and you expose yourself, then that's considered to be a crime, indecent exposure. But I guess the police are saying that standing in your doorway with your door wide open, talking on your cell phone while completely naked is not considered to be a public, public place. Even well, there's though it's, a difference between being in a public place and being visible from a public place. Yeah, well, I think that's interesting that they're not even, I mean, after a decade of this, at no point have they even bothered to try this. Because you know how cops are. I mean, usually if they want to just try to see if they can convict you on something, they'll go ahead and arrest you and charge you with it. And if yeah. you, mm. you know, if you beat the rap, then you beat the rap and you're out several thousand dollars for an attorney or at the very least the time and the effort uh, that you had to spend in court. And they're out nothing. So it's it's interesting that they actually haven't made a move to, at the very least, try to arrest the guy and say, well, you know, he's in public because you can see him from, the, you know, the door's open. That he's kind the of thing. brother of a city councilman. I don't have that detail. Mark, no, I don't know that that's true. But I'm just saying that there's <laughs> it's quite possible that he has some kind of I, I see where you're coming from. You're making a strong point. Many yeah. times uh, law enforcement agencies will just arrest and see how things go. The arrest itself is the uh, punishment. Uh, but they haven't done this to this guy in 10 years. And he's not being lewd either. There's no one alleging that he's pleasuring himself no. while he's at the front door. He's just talking on the phone, hanging out, surveying the neighborhood, so to speak, just looking around. <laughs> and apparently it's completely legal. Parents told WBTV uh, they're worried. They want to come together to help change that law to protect their children. Yeah. Well. Do their children not know that, like, the basics of anatomy? Is is that the fear that they're going to find out that boys and girls are different? And Isn't that going to happen sooner or later anyway? Yeah, I, this, I mean, come on. Welcome to the internet world. I mean, who has kids today who get online who don't think? I mean, really, if you're a parent and you've got a... A uh, young person uh, under the age of 10, I would say there's a good chance they've seen some kind of nakedness on the Internet. I mean, I know that I don't know if it was first grade, but it was fairly early on, maybe even kindergarten. I remember somebody brought a Playboy onto the bus and we were sliding it under the seats uh, to one another to, uh, you know, to look at that. And yeah, it was about the time frame for me, too. Somebody, yeah. uh, you know, in the neighborhood got a hold of uh, some older brother's nudie books or something. And we went out in the woods and took a look. Yeah, my friend down the street had a father who, who uh, collected Playboy and Penthouse. Yep, and how old were you when you saw it for the first time? I believe I was in about fourth grade. Yeah, so at some point in very, very early on in a young man's development, and I presume the same is true uh, for young ladies as well, but uh, you know, you see this stuff. We saw it even without the Internet, and now sometimes it's hard to avoid seeing things like that on the Internet. Indeed. So There's not I much that's going to stop it. I don't think that this is. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't want to put this in the area of sexuality. This is just a naked old man. Right. Um, he looks kind of middle aged, actually. All right, a naked middle aged man standing in his doorway. 
I, I don't know. I don't what, see what the problem. Nobody is. appreciates a naked middle-aged man. No, they anymore. don't. And, and as a middle-aged man who's uh, who's occasionally <laughs> naked, I, I'd like to register my protest to that. I'm very triggered right now. We'll, uh, we'll come back. No one here. cares if a naked old <laughs> middle-aged man gets triggered either. But I support uh, where Rich is coming from on this. What's the big deal if your kids see some guy naked? What is? How is this damaging? Unless you make it damaging. For your kids. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. By now, you may have heard a bit about bitcoins. But did you know bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning bitcoins or trying to make money in the bitcoin market, you've got to know bidbit.co. Why? Because bidbit.co is where you can easily receive bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. The easiest thing in the world for a reader to do is to stop reading, according to the late, great Barney Kilgore, who became managing editor of the Wall Street Journal in 1941 and grew the paper circulation from 33,000 to 1 million by the 60s. And he'd be pleased to know that his paper is one of the few that people now pay to read online. Someone else pre-internet who realized that attention is fragile? Motown Records founder Barry Gordy. In the early 60s, when his label dominated the charts, he'd bring a dozen real people into the Hitsville, USA studios and audition songs. And he'd ask, if you were down to your last dollar, would you spend it on this record or would you buy a sandwich? Today, attention span seems like an oxymoron. For tips on cutting through the clutter, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. So, yeah, Mark, they did ban all foreign flags from being flown in the event that they are the only flag being flown. But well, nonetheless, I mean... it's the flying of a flag? $30, excuse me, $50 fine and 30 hours of community service. That's dumb. This doesn't really even affect What do you most, think, just the land of the free? <laughs> most of the um, Mexican flags I see are uh, CDs hanging from people's rearview mirrors, mm -hmm. stickers. I think we could qualify that. That's not a flag. That's, it doesn't look like a flag. Got them damn colors on it. No. We're going to charge a CD. you $50 fine. $50. That's and right. that CD, what if the CD has music on it? No don't matter. It's a flag. <laughs> it's not a flag. It's a CD. If you're flying it Clearly, like a flag, sir, it's a flag, my friend. It's not a flag. It's it's hanging from fishing wire from my rear view mirror. Hanging equals flag. No. <laughs> hanging does not flag equal flag. Equals $50 fine. Pay up. Well, I have a... Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the lrn.fm Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever you want to here. You just dial on in toll free and bring it up here. 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the naked guy in North Carolina 
Charlotte, uh, WBTV reporting on a man who has been hanging out uh, in his doorway on his phone and just standing there looking around at the neighborhood naked. Uh, he's been doing it for about a decade. Police say they can't do anything about it. Our toll-free number is 855-453. And, of course, you can join us over at freetalklive.com. You can get interactive there. You can help support Free Talk Live by becoming an amplifier for as little as $5 a month. We take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live so we can get on more radio stations and bring the ideas of freedom out there as far and as wide as possible. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. Com. Cardinal Glen neighborhood in North Charlotte has experienced this man for a decade exposing himself to the neighborhood. Parents say they're worried. Mom, uh, One of the moms here, Ms. Harris, uh, says that she doesn't let her children even go outside and play. She says, I have to keep them inside the house because that's really inappropriate for young kids to see stuff like that. City leaders say neighbors do have the option of filing a complaint with a homeowner's association that prohibits nuisance activity on a property, but this guy's been doing it for a decade. Presumably, you'd think the neighbors would have figured that part out yet if that was a legitimate option for them. City Council member Greg Phipps says, quote, because what's actually happening in this particular neighbor uh, is this particular neighbor is making it difficult for people in adjoining neighbors to have the quiet enjoyment of their homes. And I disagree. I just don't understand uh, what the concern is here. Who cares if this guy's standing naked in his front door? Why is that damaging to anyone unless there's some, you know, some sort of uh, damage being done by the parents? And I think it's damaging uh, by parents to say to their kids that nudity is bad and undesirable and scary or dangerous. Well, I'd agree with you that it's the reaction to the nudity that is really the biggest problem, not the nudity itself. Um, that you know that's what causes the the damage and the upset. Said. But I would say that people also sort of deal with things, sexual things, differently these days. Nudity isn't sexual, though. I understand. That's you saying something. Yeah. That doesn't mean they perceive it that way. I posted on the Free Talk Live's Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com today a, um, a little quiz from 1979 to see whether or not your child was ready for first grade. One of the uh, number eight, question number eight was... Can your child walk four to eight blocks by themselves, say, to the store or a friend's house? Yeah, that wouldn't happen today, right? Right. And I posted it up there, and um, some guy, you know, some guy responded, yeah, my daughter could do it, but I wouldn't let her. There's too many weirdos out there these days. These days is really important Mm. because people actually believe there are more weirdos out there today than there were in 1979. And there's no reason for that. There's there's no 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 actual statistics that you could point to to make that a true statement. That is perception. And uh, when you have when you perceive the world wrongly, you are living a lie. I'm, I'm just trying to imagine, I mean, having a childhood where. You can't go and run around the neighborhood. I mean, mm. what? I, I guess they all play video games now, but but you know, it, I mean, I played video games when I was a kid. Sure, but, I still wanted to go run around the neighborhood. But I'd still get out of my house, and you know, we still did do running around the neighborhood kind of stuff. But you know, even if I was going to go play video games, I would like to sometimes do it with my friends. So that would you know mm-hmm. connotate having to walk to or bike down to their houses. And now you've got parents saying they don't even let their kids out because some guy's naked. But well, what not age? just that, but but the big threat out there is government. There was a couple uh, sure. that uh, they called themselves free range parents, and basically the uh, the government wherever they were was trying to take away their parental rights because they let their kids walk down uh, walk down to the park or walk back from the park alone. Yeah, there's a great blog out there called Free Range Kids. I believe it's is that what it is, yeah. Mark? Free Range Kids where they talk about being a free-range parent and allowing their kids to explore and and learn things on Mm -hmm. their own without always having this sort of helicopter parent hovering over them, (laughs) protecting them from everything. Yeah, and and my generation, that was just being a kid. I mean, I don't know how far free-range parents go. I haven't haven't read the stuff, but, you know, I would ride my bike all over the neighborhood. I would run around the neighborhood, and I got my share of trouble doing it. But at what age? Because I remember at seven years old, I was definitely, my son will turn seven shortly, Um, at seven years old, I was definitely out on a bicycle going 
off of my street mm-hmm. onto an um, onto a relatively busy street for a very short stint, and then onto the next corresponding street. So from 20th Street West to 19th Street West um, in Bradenton, Florida. And I know, I mean, I remember the, the you know talking about our ages, how old we were, mm-hmm. having the bicycle, what the bicycle looked like, the you wow, know I don't the, remember all that crap. When but. the training wheels came <laughs> off, the whole deal, and. So at the age my son is currently, who has, to the best of my knowledge, really, other than going at Pork Fest and sort of running around with some of the kids out of our sight uh, there, hasn't doesn't you know he doesn't go off on his own. He doesn't have any you know call to. Well, you're also not living in a neighborhood, right? Like, uh, I, I mean, you didn't grow up in a neighborhood either, though, did you? I well, mean, did you have like a farm or something? Yes, I grew up on a farm, but my grandmother had a house in town. Ah, uh-huh. so I'm referring to where my grandmother's house was. Ah, mm-hmm. I see. Now, uh, your son sort of lives out in the woods. It, there's not like a, a kid next door. There is actually something. a kid next door. Oh, he is. will probably be going this year. I will show him how to walk over to the friend's house. Ah, I want him to be okay. able to do that. Good. So I think that's this is this is the year to do that. And um, yeah, I'll just I know that I I'll was... just get the telescope out and watch him as he goes. <laughs> I know that uh, when I was seven, I was able to come home alone from school and had my own key, let myself into the house. I'm certain by that age, if not six, uh, that I was playing in the woods with uh, with my friends. So, yeah, it's not un, uh, not uncommon to, to me at all. Our toll-free number here is uh, 855-450-FREE. But this mom's saying she's going to let the kids out. Since the beginning of 2015, officers have been called to the man's home four times, according to police records. This week, neighbors were able to capture pictures and video of the man standing at his door. Clinton at Washington said, quote, I saw the video just now, so I know that people around here aren't just making up things, unquote. The reporter from WBTV tried talking to the man, but he ran away from the camera covering his face. It's pretty interesting that he's shy, (laughs) camera shy, as far as when the media shows up. But he'll stand there. When somebody comes with a camera, he runs away covering his his face. Face. (laughs) (laughs) Neighbors, neighbors are hoping with these images, the homeowners association can file some kind of nuisance complaint. Well, this is what the neighbors need to do. This is the shaming that needs to go on because this can be handled even if you can't get the police after 10 years of trying to get the police this is so incompetent these people are right this is how lazy they are they want the police to handle this problem for them they won't even bother to do it themselves they're carrying a video camera around in their pocket get the camera out and when he does his little trick stand out there in front of his house on the sidewalk and video tame his video video his naked butt standing in the doorway and then if that doesn't work then make a facebook page with his house address on it and post the videos of this uh, naked dude on them i say if you can't beat him join him more people should get naked <laughs> yeah, you just like nakedness. I don't know what your thing is. I think that people just need to get over the idea that, you know, seeing that this inch, this square inch of skin or that square inch of skin is somehow going to damage them. Yep, because, totally. Uh, okay, it's well, frustrating. It really is. It's so it, Puritan. It, 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 it is. It's, it's not so Puritan. Uh, yes, it, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Well, Ian, how would you describe it? I would look around the globe and I would see how many people um, in how many different cultures would accept a naked guy standing in their doorway. And if the number was below 10 percent, I would then not ascribe it to one particular religious group and then try to vilify it. What I would say is is it is therefore abnormal behavior and people have norms and mores. And these are the the nature of human society. If you want to change them, by all means, get out there and be a buck naked activist and do that. But don't act like. Getting the naked people that in are... public is not going to convince anybody that that's a good idea. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll sm- I'll stick to smoking weed. This guy either. <laughs> <laughs> Toll free number tonight, 855-450 for your thoughts on the naked man. Is it something that would offend you? Do your children need to be protected from naked people? Our toll free number is 855-450 free and you can share your thoughts here tonight or bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. More on the way. The final segment of Free Talk Live is coming up. You hear that, kid? That's the hum of a well-run facility. You know what I hate hearing? Silence. Silence on a production line means downtime. Downtime means wasted time. Wasted time means wasted money. Silence isn't golden, kid. It's deadly. That's why I love Granger. 
With a wide variety of the latest products, Granger gets us what we need when we need it to help keep this place up and running and humming away. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time for you. If you dial right now to 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. Rich Paul, where can listeners go to uh, encounter more of you on the Internet? Well, I've got a lot of projects going. Um, Pick one. Let's see. Well, I guess the the, uh, Church of the Invisible Hand. uh, And you can find that at tr.im slash uh, capital C, capital I, capital H. And that is a church based on the ideas of deism and uh, free market capitalism. And there is a Facebook page? Uh, yep. Uh, if you search Facebook for Church of the Invisible Hand, uh, you should find it. Yeah. So the uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. 
so check out more of Rich at the Church of the Invisible Hand on Facebook, and we'll continue with your calls and thoughts here. If you want to talk about the naked man in his doorway, you're welcome to do that. You can also bring up anything. Brian is in Colorado. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich, Paul, and Mark. Hey, guys. Love the show. Thanks, um, Brian. I just... Um, I just wanted to try to convert Mark to um, anarcho capitalist. <laughs> uh, You're not going to convert me to Nobody's anything. Nobody's ever tried that before. It's called anarcho anything. I think that anarcho and capitalist <laughs> are probably two of the worst terms to be using to uh, describe any particular philosophy. Okay. I tend to agree. Okay, voluntary, voluntarist. <laughs> anyway, pretty sure um, Mark's already a voluntarist, but you know, go ahead. I well, thought he was a minarchist. Well, Depends on who he's talking yeah, to. Yeah, I thought he was minarchist. Uh. I thought he was minarchist too. But, Here's what my thought um, process is on the subject. I have not yet at this point been shown any society that functions better than a limited government republic. But I think that people. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm sorry. Go what ahead. were you saying? Well, there's a, there actually is a society that functioned well under anarcho capitalism. Oh, is this the, uh, the little uh, place in Italy between uh, Florence and uh, the Papal States? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I saw well, that article last uh, a couple of days ago. I actually posted it on the Free Talk Live Facebook page. It's pretty cool, pretty cool story. Um, but you can't tell me that they didn't have some kind of hierarchical structure in that uh, society with elders or something like that. Um, yeah, they have, they have 14 elders, but, but the, the elders didn't have any power. Well, what does not have power mean? Um, anyway, well, they, they uh, the point that like, I'd like to make— and it, I think that this is very— what, Cas Caspius, What's the name of it? Uh, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at English. Yeah. Cas Caspia or. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll repost the, 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 the story so that people can see it at facebook.freetalklive.com. All I'm saying is, is that I believe that people should have the right to set up a society if they want to do it. So if Ian wants to go off with his crazy friends and set up a, you know, some voluntarist place where nobody wears clothes. He should be able to do that. Like, that's his business. Now, as long as he's bought the property, it's his property, he says, I don't want your school taxes. I don't want your speed limits. I don't want any of that stuff. Here, inside my property lines, these rules, th th these are the rules that we have and they apply. That's his business. That's their business. As long as they're not holding anybody against their will, who am I to say anything about that? So I'm a voluntarist in that sense that you should be able to secede if that's what you wish to do. And I think that's ultimately that's what voluntarism is about. But um, I think that we, you know, at, the, at this point, I'll take the governmental systems that tend to work. And at, I think that that means, you know, limited government and that sort of thing today. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, great. Brian, you uh, got anything else you want to say here? Uh, love the show. Keep doing what, what you're doing. Thanks and, for the call. Uh, we certainly uh, will. Let's go to Shannon in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich, Paul, and Mark. Hello, Shannon. How are you doing? Uh, hey. I was going to say that uh, you know, all my family is over from the Ireland, Scotland area. My, uh, my dad was second generation American. I'm third generation American. And our family... This whole area, nobody has a problem with the nudity. That, that is a total American concept that they have the problem with the nudity. Hmm. So you're calling out Mark. Mark was saying that he thinks people around the world have problems with people being naked. Uh, you're saying your culture in Scotland or Ireland, uh, no problem with uh, people being naked. Don't they mostly wear pants? Just because uh, pants are convenient doesn't mean that uh, people have problems with being naked, and that's why they wear them. It's nice to have pants because then you won't catch your genitals on a tree branch or something like that. Well, I still have a lot of family that uh, still wears the kilt. I wear a kilt too, but uh, that you know that that doesn't mean it's not the same thing as running around naked. Right. I'm just I'm just saying that uh, the main problem with the nudity that's just a you know united states of america thing. that's not a uh you go anywhere in europe south america brazil portuguese area you know where people have the uh, Port portuguese heritage and a, a latino heritage heck you even go down to south beach florida people are you know uh, naked down in that particular area also. have you traveled the world shannon have you gone to a lot of the the places you're mentioning yeah, I'm 
I'm retired Navy SEAL. Uh, so I've been all over the place. Been in all the conflicts of the United States of America and the United States Navy. So uh, I've seen, I used to date a girl that was from France. She come over here to my parents for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, we go down there to the, the lake. She started taking all her clothes. I'm like, wait a minute, darling, you got you can't be doing that. You're in America, I'm lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Land I mean, of the free. Know, the first time we went to the, we went down to the. It's called uh, it's called uh, White Warrior Lake. It's a little recreational area down here from Sylvester, Georgia. And uh, we go down there to get all the chairs out. A little family deal there. The Fourth of July. Next thing you know, she get ready to her and her girlfriend. You know, both from France are getting ready to take her clothes off. Thank you, Shannon. Great call. Good point tonight. I think he owned you on that one there, Mark. In fact, you can actually see there's videos uh, from Europe where they'll have some girl just take off her clothes and, you know, just in the streets, city environment. And, you know, people don't really bat an eye at it. Some of them will take out their cameras and take a picture, uh, but it's like no big deal that somebody's naked in the streets. I don't streets. know what you mean by big deal. Like, this, what I'm saying, it is a big deal if somebody's taking a picture, right? Like, they don't take pictures of people that are just wandering around. But it's not a big around. deal in a negative way. It's not a big deal like people are protesting, getting angry, calling the police, freaking out. This isn't out. people protesting. This is a few people in a neighborhood having a problem, and you're calling them Puritan. It's a religion you know nothing about. You shouldn't it's come out of It's an adjective. I'm not calling Okay, it. yeah, I, I would like to... Like, because I would have used the term Puritan as well, but I would not have been referring to the more or less defunct sect um, of the people who originally right. came over, the pilgrims, but rather uh, religious attitudes that were uh, that were you know similar to that, very Correct. restrictive. I would call the uh, some of the Islamics, uh, Islamic people. I would call Puritans. Yeah, in if you their use views. the term shaker, it's not going to you know resonate with people. Uh, okay, but people so know what Puritan is. First off, I would to. stick with Victorians because Puritans probably weren't as Puritan as you might imagine. Secondly, the UCC Church is alive and well. The Congregationalists changed their name uh, decades ago. Um, to, or the, the Puritans changed their name decade ago to Congregationalists, so they're doing just fine. Um, let, so terms mean something. Also, Bollywood, they don't even produce movies where people kiss. This isn't um, in mm -hmm. India, large portion of the population, uh, you know, large population of the earth. Uh, I'm just saying that this behavior would be considered abnormal in most places around the world. That's all I'm saying. And if you want to do something about it, all I'm suggesting is do something, uh, you know, shame this guy if that's what you want to do, shame somebody. I but don't want to do those things. I would contend that, that was, that's more Victorian than it would be Puritan. Definition number two of the word Puritan as, uh, let's see here, a noun, a person who is I'm not saying words don't get misused, Ian. Moral. This is not misused. This is one of the definitions. A person who is strict in moral or religious matters, often excessively so. Let's go to Tommy in in uh, Glasgow. Glasgow, Tommy. Glasgow, Scotland. Scotland is a Puritan state. Two nights ago, I watched the police sitting in wait for a man to walk round the corner and pull out his little man and urinate, and they gave him a fine. There is a man who walks the length of the UK naked, and every time he walks out naked, he is arrested and oh, put man. in jail. Scotland is a Puritan state, and did you know the real reason why Scots wear a kilt? It's because that the sheep became used to the sound of the zip being unfurled. <laughs> oh, so... no! Thanks for the call tonight, Tommy. Is... I appreciate it. Oh, wow. Didn't see that one coming. I didn't. No. I kind of did a little. <laughs> Out of time for tonight, but you can join us tomorrow online. In the meantime, over at freetalklive.com and check out Rich at Church of the Invisible Hand on Facebook. We'll see you tomorrow night. And in the meantime, again, enjoy all the features over at freetalklive.com and join the AMP program at amp.freetalklive.com. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? 
Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,156, no change. Silver opened at $15.69, up four cents. And Bitcoin is trading around $288.32. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. In the news, the American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit in New York Southern District, seeking records related to drone strikes from the Justice and Defense Departments and the CIA. The ACLU says the government has failed to respond to year-old requests for records. The civil rights group said the Obama administration has failed to deliver on promises of transparency on drone strikes. Digital privacy groups are condemning a new bill they say poses threats to whistleblowers and gives the U.S. government expanded access to digital information of private individuals.